Good evening. Uh, sorry, good evening. Good day sa inyong lahat, dear teachers. No? Ayan. I'm not sure if naririnig ba ako ngayon ng ating mga madlang people. Hold on. So good afternoon, no? Good afternoon sa lahat, no? Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, uh, sino to? Aspe, no? Ayan, good afternoon, Aspe, no? Thank you for the first commenter in my YouTube page right now, no? Sir Chance T. Elitambayan is now again live via YouTube. Good evening, good sir. <laughs> no? Okay. Kasi, ana, alam nyo teachers, no? Nasanay kasi ako na mag-live uh, uh, gabi. No, kaya sabi ko, good evening, no? Oh. So, hi, Coach John, no? Hello, Lodi Kuyan. <laughs> Katatapos mo lang mag-live, ano? Oh. So, inaabangan kitang matapos para, ano, no? Para, ano, para masaya. Sorry. Okay, so, ayan. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday po, Ma'am Ariane Miliorada. Okay, so, eto tayo. Shout out muna tayo, be. Kung saan ba talaga or taga saan yung ating mga watchers ngayon, no? Happy Father's Day sa inyong lahat ng mga tatay dyan, ng mga lolo, no? Sa mga tiyuhin natin, no? Happy Father's Day po sa inyong lahat. Coach Coach John, Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Ayan, no? Happy Father's Day sa mga, ano no? Bilang uh, pasalamat sa iyo, no? Na mga TLE natin. Okay, so Happy Father's Day, no? Ma'am Jessa Ogano, ayan. We are now at uh, 18, no? 18 uh, persons are currently watching 18 viewers no from Marian uh, from Arian Miliorada sir from Laguna ayan malayo-layo pala yung atin narating ngayon no from Arian Miliaro, uh, Miliorada from Laguna po Miss Lynn Espanyola watching from Quezon City ayan so oh no sige sige pasok muna sa ano ano pasok muna sa ating um, no YouTube channel and invite your friends who are from TLA members please inform that we're going to start this one and of course no watching from Agusan del Sur ayan from Lainel Tangub oh no so um happy fathers day then sa inyo no uh, uh sino ba dito? sir from southern leyte oh malayo-layo to si ma'am Jane Terrante ayan no no nabasa na rin yung greetings. <laughs> ayan ano, so dab, dab, dami kasi mga greetings dito eh. No? So ayan, happy Father's Day sa inyong lahat at saka welcome sa ating live session this afternoon, okay? So this afternoon is we will be talking all about trainers methodology research and assessment Sunday, no? Parang ano ah, parang full force, no? Parang full force yung ating Sunday ngayon kasi kaninang umaga more on ICT. No, ah, sorry, more on industrial arts, no? Industrial arts technology, HET business that was discussed from our Lodi coach Jan Di Subosa. No, this afternoon naman magfa-follow up magre-rest back naman si coach Chan sa kanyang trainers methodology research and assessment Sunday. Oh, no. Parang ano lang, parang nag-review lang kayo, parang nag parang nasa review center lang din kayo ngayon, ano? At least, no, nasa comfort Zone kayo ngayon sa inyong bahay ngayon, nakahiga lang, no? Na habang ano, no, nag uh, nakahiga nanonood ng mga live sessions namin. So maraming salamat po sa pagtangkilik ng Sir Chan Steel Tambayan, pati na rin po sa Sir John Dexter Subosa's page at saka yung ating um, Sir Brian Survey Tutorial Center. Ayun. So thank you so much, no, for joining. Um natutuwa po kami, natutuwa po ako personally. No, for sa pagtangkilik ng aming page at sa pagtitiwala. Okay? At bilang pasasalamat, no, we're gonna have to do the all out Sunday session. Okay? So maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa tiwala and for making Sir Chance TLE Tambayan as your part of your TLE journey for your last board exam this September 2023. Ayan, no? This will be your last and final board exam, no? Convince yourself, manifest Dasal, 
aral at tiwala. Ayan. Tatlong tatlong salita, no, na magbubuo sa inyong 2023 na lisensya. Okay? Dasal, aral at tiwala. Okay, so dito pa. So, sir, watching from Kota Bato po, no? From Pigkawayan, North Kota Bato, Arjon Manamba. Ayan. Hello po, sir Arjon, no? Okay, watching from Zamboanga City, Gia Marie Mata. Ayan, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Marilyn Tan, sa Lipot, sir, from Leyte. Okay, so ito po yung ating mga viewers ngayon. No? Medyo konti lang yung nanonood natin ngayon. Maybe because yung iba nagsa-celebrate ng Father's Day. Di ba? Yung iba nakiselebrate sa Father's Day. Okay, so hindi naman po wala namang ano po yun kasi we are going live at saka free lang po ito. Alright, so please support my channel no, by promoting Sir Chance TLE Tambayan. Okay, this session ngayong Sunday na to, we will be talking all about trainer's methodology. Oops, trainer's methodology doesn't cover only one subject. Okay, uh, so what are the subjects that can be discussed in trainer's methodology? We will be talking six major components or six core competencies in trainer's methodology level one. And we will be talking as well curriculum development on trainers methodology level 2 no kasi minsan nahihirapan tayo sa curriculum development eh you have to remember that core dev or curriculum development is a co is a professional subject offered during your college during our college days tama no so yan po at least hindi na tayo mahihirapan on how to how to interpret how to analyze how to answer questions kapag binabato tayo ng professional education subject na na pabilang sa PLA subject natin. Okay? Because trainer's methodology subject, ito siya yung parang ano ba, parang alter, no, ng ating prof ed subject. No, nagkatawang ano, nagkatawang trainer's methodology at ipinahagi sa TLE, pero dapat sana dito ay nasa professional education subject na pabilang. Well, anyway, since TLE naman tayo talaga, no, trainer's methodology is under the table of specification for, no, TLE majorship. Ayan, no? Watching from Bayawan, no? Negros Oriental yata yan, no? Bankhead Corpus. So, watching from Pasig. Oh, from Pasig, we have Annalyn Sali Saligumba. Sir, watching from Nueva Ecija, Alessa del Castillo. Ayan, hello po sa inyong lahat, no? no? I, uh, good afternoon, good afternoon po, and welcome to the channel this afternoon. Okay, so in terms naman sa research, no? Kapag research ang pag-uusapan natin, dear teachers, no, hindi na tayo nababaguhan sa research. Sapagkat yung research kasi na natatakol or na hahawig or na isali sa board exam, ayun nalaga yung mga basic concepts. Okay? Basic concepts yun, subalit we were not able to talk about it during our college days. Maybe we na-discuss yun, nakalimutan natin. No, ipagpalagay lang natin na nakalimutan natin yung research topics natin. Actually, mga basic questions lang po yung lumabas. However, it needs a deeper knowledge or a rote learning na kung saan dapat meron tayong mga prior knowledge about doon. That is all about research. Oy, sir, assessment. No? Assessment, konti lang yung lumabas na assessment. Subalit, they play a significant role in terms of trainer's methodology pa rin. Ano? Kasi bakit po? Because si trainer's methodology kakambal niya po si assessment. Okay? Hindi po magiging ano, hindi po magiging successful ang isang assess ang isang TM course on okay, ang isang training kung hindi mo alam paano ah, i-handle si assessment. Okay? Validity, reliability, mean, median, mode. Yun yung mga bagay-bagay na yun eh. Pero kailangan ba i-emphasize yun? Hindi na kasi medyo nandoon na po na po yun sa ating tinatawag na professional education. Ah, oh, no? So Watching from Bukidnon, Regine Mayhimaya. Ayan. So watching from Cotabato City, Hana Alim. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. From Valenzuela, lovely Claire Takulog. Ayan. Let's proceed with question number one. Okay. So question number one, nagad tayo. Ano? Uh, um, if you would like to participate, you may answer. Pero kung hindi nakikinig lang kayo, makikinig lang kayo, okay lang po. Pero the best thing to do is to do an interaction here. Because as they said, the more na magkakaroon ka ng interaction, the more na ma-retain yung idea. No? Ma-retain yung idea sa'yo. Kaninong ko na-experience yan? That is from Edgar Dale. No? 
direct experience, direct purposeful experience from uh, from Edgar Dale na kung saan if you would like to participate no, ayan kapag may ginagawa ka 90% of the action, 90% of the participation will come and retain sa iyong sarili. Kaya nga every time may discussion, we uh, encourage everyone to participate, ano? Kasi sa pagkat kapag nagpa-participate ka, the tendency is the knowledge that you answer, no? Kung mali man, ma-retain 'yon. No, ma-correct 'yon. Kapag kung uh, tama naman at least na-appreciate mo yung sarili mo na oh, okay, ganito na ako in terms of this knowledge. Ayan, no? So good evening, uh, good afternoon sa inyo lahat. Watching from USA. Ayan, ano? Alan, Sir John Dex, alam niyo ba yung USA dito sa Cebu? There is unahan sa Argao, no? United Squatters Area. Napaka-humble naman ng coach John natin, ano? May bahay na 'to, may mansion pa. O oh, di ba? May mansion yan siya. <laughs> okay, let's proceed with question number one. Question number one talks about kaligira. Ah, sorry, talks about different ano, no? Components of research. Okay. Ah, ayan. So question number one, teacher, uh, sir, talks about this. What do we call as overview? Okay, by the way, we've started this session without a prayer. So let's pray first, by the way, to be guided with the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay, um, for all our brothers and sisters who are in Muslim communities and for all those who belong to other religions, you may say your own prayer. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Grant us the wisdom, the knowledge, and courage that we may be able to conquer successfully with good rating sa September 2023 licensure examination, lalong, lalong na po sa aming, sa aming major ship. Lord, bigyan niyo po kami ng lakas, tiwala sa sarili, at good health para may paglaban namin ang aming major ship. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your most holy son, and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Lady of Guadalupe of Cebu, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ayan. So, <laughs> ano? Okay. Hindi <clears throat> pala tayo nakapag-pray, teachers. Ano? Oh, 51 viewers. <laughs> Dami naman yun naman. Okay. Number one. Let's talk about overview. Kapag overview po ang pag-uusapan, okay, kapag overview po ang pag-uusapan, no? Meron tayo ditong mga choices na kung saan pa parang pasok siya sa overview. 'Di ba kapag overview lang isa parang yung ano, yung parang topmost, 'di ba? Okay, topmost lang siya. No, parang wala kang talagang idea, eh. parang abstract kumbaga. Pero kung ko yung ko yung abstract kasi, it's more on short summary. Pero kapag babasahin mo uli ito, if you're going to continue the question, this is an overview about a specific topic. Okay? An overview of what has been written about a specific topic. Take a look with this word, has been written. Therefore, may na-produce ka na. Okay? Okay, may na-produce ka na. So what are you going to do with this one is you are going to analyze each of the choices kung bakit hindi siya yung sagot. Let's eliminate sino? References. Bakit, sir? Kapag references po, ito po yung mga sources of information. Hindi po siya nagiging overview. Okay? Siya, siya lang po yung mga sources of information natin wherein which binibigyan natin ng credit in a form of citation. Okay? Kapag referencing, we give credit to what is due to that person in a form of citation. At saka kapag citation na pag-usapan, we can discuss citations on the other pages here around. Okay, those are mga references. Now, ano naman, sir, kapag, oh, well, kapag references naman, may dalawang ulit tayo ng referencing. Di ba? Most common referencing style sa ginagamit natin, that is APA or the American Psychological Association Referencing. Sir, saang, ano yan, sir? Saang bahagi yan ng pananaliksik ginagamit? Usually education po. Education related. Okay, psychological related at saka sciences related na research. These are for APA format style of referencing. Sir, what about yung mga humanities naman, sir? Yung mga humanities courses natin in research. Usually, ginamit na din is the Modern Language Association Referencing Style or MLA. 
Okay, M L A at saka A P A. Ayan, no? M L A this is used for humanities. Tapos si A P A that is for education, psychology, psychologists and psychology subjects or courses and sciences. Okay? Those are dalawa dalawa yung pinaka most common yan. Okay? Now, review. Kapag review ba nabibigay ka ng overview, no? Kapag review is parang very broad yan eh. No? You try to scrutinize, you try to take a look back, no? Okay? Kaya nga may prefix na re. Tingnan ulit. Okay? Tingnan ulit, no? Hindi ka pa nakagawa, may titingnan ka na ulit, hindi po 'yan. Now, synthesis. Synthesis po is a type or, di ba kapag mag-synthesize tayo, you need to combine information. Meaning to say, may nangyayari bang synthesizing during sa paggawa ng research? Yes. In what way man, sir? In what way nagkakaroon ng synthesis in writing? That was that, sorry, that was when. That is the time when, hold on, dapat hindi ko i-blur yung background ko para para magkakaroon ng, ayan, hold on ha. Do not blur background para ano lang. Okay, kailan ba nagkakaroon ng synthesizing? Say for example, gumagamit ka ng mga salita or you are citing an information coming from secondary sources or tertiary sources. Okay? Now, yung synthesizing doon is that you are trying to use that one, you are trying to paraphrase or sometimes insert those words, okay, creating, synthesizing, creating, no? You are trying to put it in your research. Those are synthesizing po. Alright, so you need to combine informations, no? Para sa mga or galing sa mga ibat ibang sources. Tapos bigyan mo na lang ng sarili mong analysis of your literature. That is what synthesis is in your process of writing. At this time, this talks or more on literature review. Okay, okay. This talks more on literature review. Ang tanong ngayon sa ang chapter ba na pabilang si literature review? Or tinatawag natin tong R, R, L. Review on Related Literatures. Related literatures, this supports your documents, this supports your claim, this talks about overview of your about-to-be topic. Tama. Now, ngayon sabi nila doon, Sir, in terms of um, uh, related literature, sir, you have to remember the concept of currency of data. No? The current data, the current trend. No? Ilang years po ba yun? That should be 10 years from the date. Okay? It should be 10 years. No? Beyond, if you are going to source out, okay? If you are going to cite sources that goes beyond 10 years from 2023, it could invalidate your claim. It could invalidate your literature. Okay? That's one of the things that I've patandaan kapag literature review ang pag-uusapan dito. No? Another thing, kapag literature review ang pag-uusapan, always cite this what do we call as citations or owners of the words or credit to, to, every, or to every text na ginamit mo na hindi naman sa'yo. Because you will be or you will fall under plagiarism or magiging plagiarism out yan kapag hindi ka nagbigay sure review po ang sagot dito isang tanong mahabang sagot ang mahabang explanation bakit you have to know the difference between the three the four sir is this question lots or hats is this question a lots or hats this is a lots question this is only a lower order thinking skill question. This is more on remembering. No? Okay? Remembering. Now, ito ah, kapag referencing, babalik tayo sa referencing. Di ba sabi ko nini, di ba? Uh, hold on. Ito. Kapag referencing, we have two type tama usually. That is APA at saka yung ating tinatawag na MLA. Alright. Take a look with the example here. In terms of referencing a book, okay, sa reference list mo, dapat ito yung mauna. Author's last name, first initial, tapos yung nasa loob ng parenthesis is the year. 
Okay? Ano po yun doon? Dapat it should be written that way. Now, in terms of in-text citation, sir, pareho lang po yan sila lahat. Nasa loob po yan. Pero, wag kang magpakampante. Because in terms of in-text citation po, okay? In terms of in-text citation in your research, may dalawang uri tayo. May da there are two forms in writing in-text citation. We have the integral. And we also have the non-integral, or in other term, this is coined as this is coined as the parenthetical, okay? The parenthetical form, no? Or citation, wherein which kapag integral, ang nangyayari po sa integral is that nasa labas si author, nasa loob si date. Ah, now kapag parenthetical naman, dalawa yan, no? Kapag non-integral or parenthetical, ang nangyayari dyan is si both si author at saka si date ay nasa loob ng isang parenthesis. Ngaya nga lang, si integral is you put emphasis on mismo sa unahan ng paragraph. Sa unahan ng paragraph, andun si integral. Halimbawa, according to Howard Gardner, pa, close parenthesis, 2016, in his theory, blah, 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 chut, chut, chut. Ayun. Okay? That was integral type of writing. Pero, kapag magsasabi ka ng integral writing or non-integral, uh, anong gagawin mo sa non-integral? No? The theory of the, the, the theory of multiple intelligences, intelligences supports the learner that there are nine intelligence type, uh, nine types of intelligences. Tapos, sa panghuli dyan, sa panghuli, after mo nag-state, is may nato doon. How are a gardener? Gardener, tapos kama na at 2016. Ah, no. Meaning to say, sa integral part, sa non-integral or parenthetical part of writing, both si author at sa kasi date ay nasa loob ng parentheses. Okay. Now, habang si integral naman is ganito yung form, gardener. Okay, gardener. Okay, 2016. Okay, introduce the theory of multiple integers. Blue example lang yun. Okay, eto po yung pinagkakaiba ng integral at sa kanan integral. And both of them are used saan? That is used in in-text citation. Okay, sir, what if sir maraming author? If there are two authors, just write still here. Okay, Miller and Shoes. No? Miller and Shoe, 2005. Sir, kapag three or more. Sir, what are you going to do kapag three or more references or authors in a certain reference? What are you going to do? Kapag three authors in one reference, you're just going to use et al. Okay, you are going to use the word at all. Ayan ha? Klaro po yan in terms of referencing. Very good teachers. Ayan no? I hope I have made myself clear on the matter of in-text citation, integral and non-integral. Tapos sa referencing na din po. Question number two. <clears throat> when researcher Trina uses a completed study that she found in peer reviewed journal this then this related study she found is considered to be coming from what source still the same we are trying to do the sourcing no what type of source actually there are three type of sources kung inyo na tandaan teachers during your college during your research class we have three type of sources what are the three types of sources it is a b and C. Okay? According to qualitative research, the according to qualitative research, ito tada nyo, ha? according to qualitative research, researchers are the most important element or data source of every research or qualitative research. Researchers are the most important element in the qualitative research. Now, 
Sir, primary data. What is the primary source? Kapag primary source po, okay? Okay? Kapag primary source po, di ba primary first? Ah. Primary first, secondary second, of course, tertiary third. No? Pero sino-sino sila? Okay? Kapag primary source po, tandaan po ito. Ikaw yung pinakauna, that is raw data. Okay? That was a raw data. Meaning to say, primary sources refer to the original research study or first-hand accounts. No? Nangyayari dyan is, uh, ikaw mismo, no? the original mismo, the original data mismo, yung ginagamit natin dyan. And that is the primary data. Ano naman yung secondary data, teacher? Kapag secondary data ang pag-uusapan natin, that talks on, ano? Secondary data. Ito po yung ginawa ni researcher Trina. Researcher Trina implies secondary data. Bakit secondary ang sagot dito, sir? Because she found it in a peer-reviewed journal that is on journal. Therefore, kapag secondary data, these are books. These are books, newspapers. Sorry, ako makapagsulat, ha? Newspapers, a magazine, and any other sources na kung saan may it be printed or in digital forms. Those are in secondary data po. Sir, tertiary data. Medyo mahirap intindihin si tertiary data, uh, tertiary source teachers. Bakit? Kapag sa tertiary source ang pag-uusapan natin, you are quoting, you are quoting a certain quote from a quotation in a book. Ah, halimbawa, di ba book? Ito, book. Ah. Ayan, book yan. Ah. Di ba this book is considered to be secondary? Di ba? Books are secondary resources. How to achieve tertiary resources, sir? Ito. Sometimes, it is being written here. No? According to... Okay, according to, okay, Henry, 2010, uh, 2015, uh, blah, 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 chu chu chu. Now, paano mo to gagawin, sir, na magiging tertiary data? Gagamitin mo to, isight mo to para magiging tertiary. Anong gagawin mo? In the book of, anong title sa book? Anong page sa book? Tapos site kung saan mo yan kinuha ang data na yan. Okay? That becomes the tertiary source of data. Okay? Tertiary source of data na kung saan a quotation ay kinuha mo mula sa quotation na nasa libro o nasa aklat. That is a tertiary source of data. But at this time, teacher Trina is trying only to review a source from journal. Journal, a printed material. Therefore, this becomes a secondary data. Okay? That becomes a secondary data. Therefore, the answer here is letter B. Alright, no? So, shout out sa 66 viewers natin ngayon. Ayan, thank you so much, dear teachers. Okay, eto, sir. Another researcher. Okay? Researcher Renato's style in writing the review on related literature is to put in parentheses, oops, parentheses, parenthetical citation, no? Parenthetical citation to. Bakit? Andun ka mismo sa parentheses, no? Is to put in parentheses the author and the year of publication. Therefore, ang tanong dito, what is the in-text citation na ginamit ni researcher Renato? No? Oh, na-mention ko na to kanina. Now, sir, Naguguluhan ako sa tanong. Ito yung ipinapahiwatig sa tanong. Ayan. Holmes and Watson, 2005, introduced a reliable AQ method for measuring animal intelligence or animal quotient. 
Okay, so Holmes and Watson, parenthesis 2005, introduced a reliable AQ method for measuring animal intelligence. Another writing, another format. Sabi dito, in 2005, a reliable animal quotient method or AQ method for measuring animal intelligence was developed. Holmes, B, and Watson, 2005. Ah, oh, no? Sir, bakit nga ba nagkakaroon ng iba't ibang citation? Ah, bakit nagkakaroon ng iba't ibang citation, dear teachers? No? Magkapareho ba sila ng concept? Yes. Pero are they trying to emphasize the same thing? No. Ah. Kapag integral kasi, bakit integral? Okay? The answer here, I will tell you later what's the answer here. Pero halatang halata naman. Ano? Ah. Kapag integral kasi, it creates doubt. Okay? It creates doubt. Bakit? Okay? Bakit? The author has his own point of view. Ikaw din, may sariling point of view. Tama. Your point of view and the author's point of view, okay, the author's point of view plays a very significant role that becomes there is this doubt. Okay? No. So, in terms of non-integral, tingnan nyo dito. No? Tingnan nyo dito. Sa 2005, a reliable method for measuring animal intelligence was developed. Parang ang nangyayari dito is there is this certainty. Okay? Parang very certain ka na. Meaning to say, sa integral part, okay, sa integral part, during the integral part, this one, letter A, this is letter A, this is letter B. Sa integral part, the cited author is important in the story or in your literature. Again, kapag integral part, you give emphasis also, not just on the quotation, but also to the author mismo. While on the non-integral part, ang nangyayari to, during the parenthetical citation, you give more emphasis on the quotation and not on the, saan? Not on the author. Because the author is not important in the story kapag parenthetical citation ang gagamitin mo. Meaning to say, it is not available for engagement with. Okay? Parang ano lang, kinuha mo lang talaga etong word na to. Okay? Parang nag-ano ka lang, no? parang nag-cite ka lang dyan. Pero kapag dito, tingnan mo dito, Holmes and Watson to introduce. Meaning to say, may nilalaro siya dito, may, ka, may kinalaman siya dyan. Although, magkapareho lang, magkapareho lang sila na yung dalawa ay may kinalaman dyan sa AQ method. Okay? Now, Yan po yung pagkakaiba ng integral at non-integral form. Pero yung tanong kasi is more on analysis na kung saan you have to analyze what is being said. Ito, ito, parenthesis. The author and the year of publication. Alin dyan, if this is A, this is the, the integral form and this is the non-integral form. Okay? This is the integral form and the non-integral form. Therefore, alin dyan ang nagsasaad ng kanyang tanong? Which of that choices answers the question about researcher Renato? Therefore, the answer here is no other than letter B. In 2005, a reliable AQ method for measuring animal intelligence was developed. Sorry, di ko na pala na record to ah. Hold on, ha. I should record this on computer as well. Sorry, di ko na record. I should have a copy on this. All right. Okay. So, ayan. That is in 2005. Okay. That is Holmes and Watson 2005. The answer there is non-integral. Ano yung, ano yung other name na, 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 na non-integral? That is also a parenthetical. Parenthetical. Okay, parenthetical citation. Ayan, ah. So, I hope okay pa kayo dyan. Okay, maraming salamat once again. Nating 70 viewers ngayong hapon na to. Okay, so, ayan, ah. So, that is the parenthetical.
parenthetical citation. And the answer is about mismo ng parenthetical citation search process where the researcher sets aside his own bias. Oh, ito, very important na mabasa nyo to. Set aside his own bias. Okay? Lahat pa tayo may bias? Yes, of course. We all have bias. Okay? Now, if this one, if we're gonna take a look on this one, this falls under, ano to eh? This falls under, um, aside sa ethical standards, no? Uh, this more, this uh, focuses more on tinatawag nating reflexibility. Ah, sorry, lef, reflexivi, reflexivity. Okay, that is reflexivity. Ano po ba yung reflexivity in research? Okay? Kapag reflexivity uh, kapag reflexivity in research, kapag usapan natin, ikaw as a researcher, you as a researcher, what do you bring as a researcher? Okay? What do you bring as a researcher? Kapag nag-conduct ka ng research, who are you? Di ba? May experiences ka, may mindset ka, may worldview ka, may personal point of view ka, may sarili kang mundo my culture ka, you have a power. Bringing all those things would create you to the word bias. Because bias, no? okay? Because bias is the tendency no? or an inclination to prejudice in one area because hindi mo nga siya gusto. Diba? That becomes a bias in your research. Now, how can you avoid bias no you have to undergo reflexivity no you reflect your bias and your preconceptions and dapat mo tong ma-minimize okay uh, no kapag again risk kapag researcher ka what do you bring yourself okay no ayan so what is the answer here the answer here is bracketing bakit bracketing sir no could you explain what is bracketing Bracketing in research actually is also termed as epochy. Okay. Ano nga yung epochy natin? Diba? What is epochy? Okay. What is epochy? Ito po yung suspension of judgment. Okay. Suspension of judgment po natin ito. No? We suspend our judgment. No? We try to isolate those judgments for us to conduct okay for us that so that the data that we gather will not influence the interpretation of the participants experiences of course no may may bias tayo no social bias personal bias no hindi ka mapapa-interview sa kanya dahil hindi mo siya gusto no kasi ano siya kasi uh, parang uh, ano na di, di mo siya type na magpapa-interview no that's already a bias okay sir kapag na-practice mo po ang bracketing sa research ano nangyayari po nito is no in practicing bracketing you try to suspend your judgment and ano po yan you maintain the objectivity of your research process meaning to say you follow what is on the data the collection analysis including the interpretation sa iyong research. Okay? Once you acknowledge, once you once acknowledge mo, no? Yung bracketing of ideas, meaning to say you are good to go in your processes. At least alam mo na kung ano yung mga dapat mong iwasan para ka magkakaroon ng good result of your data. That is a bracketing. Kapag setting aside the bias, that is bracketing method. Ano yung journaling? Okay? Ano yung journaling by the way? Di ba kapag journaling, ito po yung siya under pa rin to sa kwali. No? Kapag journaling, you try to maintain personal journals or yung mga diaries mo all throughout na nagkakandak ka ng research. Okay? Yung may meron ka bang ano ba? Meron kang na ano, napag-isipan bigla. You try to put it on journal. You try to put it in writing. Sa so, nakatulong po ba ito, sir? Yes. Because this will help you as a researcher to maintain your reflections, your records. Okay? Ayan. Sir, ano naman yung member check? What is member check in terms of qualitative research? Sa qualitative research, 
ano, uh, member, ma, uh, ano to, member check po, ito po yung mga researchers that verify the accuracy and interpretation of their findings. No? So, ayan po, no? Um, it involves sharing preliminary finding, yung mga interpretation of the participants, no? While the member an important step in ensuring the validity, no? They it is not directly related to biases nato. Natin pala. Das members member check. Ano yung memoing? Memoing is the same also or is almost the same, I mean, in journaling, no? You practice writing an analytical memo. No? during your processes. Pag may nakita ka diyan na kung saan kailangan mo yang i-improve or kailangan mo yang i ano diyan no? kailangan mo siyang uh, pagtuluan ng pansin, you put it in a very small paper, you try to write it, you try to give an insight of it. Yan po yung memoing na tinatawag natin. Okay? The answer here is no other than letter A, bracketing. Setting aside of own bias is known as bracketing in research. Okay, sir. Bakit wala ka po dong chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3? Actually, nasa private videos po namin yun. Okay? Uh, no? Kapag gusto nyo malaman kung sino yun sa chapter 1, significance of the study, nature of the study, introduction of the study, nasa private page po namin yun. So, if you want to join Sir Chan Silitambaya, no? More on videos on research, you just have to message Sir Chan at this time. Alright, let's proceed to the next question. Dr. Liza, conducted a qualitative study. Ito, qualitative. Bakit qualitative, sir? Because it's more on uh, experiences. Okay? It's more on experiences. Deeper understanding and experiences. To understand how they have resisted change throughout the years that resulted in the preservation of their cultural tradition. Sino yung, sino yung target na dito? That is the Kankanese of Binget. This is an ethnics. No? Her study must have employed what research design? The question is that, the first question is, ito yung kanyang research target, oh? Kankanese of Binget. One person or as a group? It's as a group. Population in general. Therefore, you erase case study. Okay? Bakit? Bakit, sir? Bakit natin i-erase si case study, sir? Because case study specifically only tackles or focuses on one person or one single phenomena. Okay? That is case study. Kapag case study kasi, no, it's only a single case or small number of cases na kung saan, um, na kung saan we do not... Um, the type of study na ginawa ni Dr. Liza is not applicable on case study. Kasi pang malakihan to eh. Okay, pang malakihan yan. Sir, ano tong phenomenology? Phenomenon. Di ba? Phenomenon, phenomenology. What is phenomenology? Phenomen phenomenology, quality research pa rin yan. Deeper understanding and concept. No? Ano po yan? That, in, that aims to understand, to analyze, no? to describe, I mean, the essence of experiences on a particular phenomenon. Halimbawa, Bulkang mayon ang pagputok ng bulkang mayon is there is a phenomenon tama a natural na in in a natural setting no punta ka doon what happened to people during the time no that is already a phenomenological a phenomenological research okay but then the study of Dr. Liza doesn't talk about phenomenon but it talks about cultural tradition and beliefs preservation and this is usually anchored saan? Under ethnography. Okay? Under po yan ng ethnography. Remember po that ethnography is under po ng ating tinatawag na anthropology. Diba? Oh, general education, anthropology, study of the origin and development of human societies and culture. No? Anthropology, ito po yung study of the development and origin of human oh, societies and culture that is the anthropology and the, in the deeper context on that one we have this ethnography as under its part kapag ethnography po it talks about collecting data in the use of social and behavioral experiences or sciences ah sir what are the methods used here implied here usually interview method and observation method in a natural setting 
Ano yung natural setting, sir? Kapag ikaw ay isang researcher na kung saan hindi nila alam na sila ay pinag-uusapan, nag, nag-study ka sa kanila, that is a covert research. Covert research po ang tawag doon. No? Na kung saan pinag-aaralan mo sila, pero hindi nila alam na sila pala pinag-aaralan. That is covert research or covert research. Pero kapag andun ka mismo sa setting nila, oh, andun ka mismo sa setting nila, tapos alam nila na pinag-aaralan mo sila, that becomes an overt research. Okay? That becomes an overt research. Remember in professional education, according to Hawthorne effect, diba? according to Hawthorne effect in, research, in professional education, an attitude will change if something is observing on them. That is what Hawthorne effect means. Okay? That is what Hawthorne effect means. There's a sudden change of attitude or progress. If say, for example, you have been observed. No? Sir, hindi naman to Prof. Ed, sir. This is trainer's methodology, research and assessment. Again, magkamukha po si TM research and assessment sa ating professional education subject. Kailangan mo lang talaga intindihin bawat words, you're good to go. You'll get a 95% passing rate. Oh, haba naman nun. Sige, 90% passing rate na lang, sir. Okay, di ba? Yan po yung tinatawag nating ethnography. Okay? That is ethnography. Sir, what is narratology? Narratology, pag-aaral ng mga nara. Without just kidding. No. Narratology teachers is a study of narratives and storytelling. No? Pag-aaral po yan ng mga narratives, ng mga storytelling. Example, sir, sa mga history natin. No? Oh. How are they being? Uh, how were they able to arrive on a certain conclusion because of this type of research? Okay. Example po nito, sir, is the multiple works of Dr. Jose Rizal. Sino ba talaga si Dr. Jose Rizal? E ikaw sa researcher, hindi mo siya naabutan. Pero based on the works of the same author, okay, or same type of narratives, the tendency is you were able to get at least a finding of a part of what you've studied with. That is narratology. Okay? Now, pero, actually, Dr. Liza's case here is not about case study. Hindi siya individual. Hindi rin siya writings. Hindi rin siya one phenomenon. He, Dr. Liza has to emerge herself into the process mismo. Therefore, the best answer here is no other than ethnography. Okay? That is ethnography, ethnics. Nakaka ano pa ba? Nakakahinga pa ba diyan sa gilid natin? Ano? Well, a shout out sa ating mga uh, 69 viewers. Ayan. Thank you so much for participating on my channel this afternoon. Okay, so ayan, no? So, let's proceed to the next question po. Ito. Researcher Greg puts premium on selecting his prospective qualitative study in four months based on their availability at times. He so desires to conduct sampling. Now, must be employing what type of sampling method? Again, huh? researcher Greg puts emphasis on selecting his active qualitative study in four months based on their availability at times. Ito yung clue word mo dito. Availability at times. So, he desires to conduct sampling. What employment or what type of Ano, no? In what 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 must be employing, okay? Uh, he must be employing what type of sampling method, okay? So, type of sampling method that he employed here, let's talk about convenience, probabilistic, purposive, or ANC. Alright? Now, uh, daming sumagot ng letter A. Daming sumagot ng letter C. The house was divided. Uh, let's try to see. Isa-isahin natin dito kung sino talaga yung sagot. Ano talaga yung sagot. Kapag convenience ang pag-uusapan that talks about in other term, grab sampling. Sana all may grab. Okay, grab sampling or what do we call as accidental sampling? Ah, na? Ano yung benefit ng convenience sampling, sir? People who are easily reached, no? 
Now, they have to answer the survey. They will be your target samples, target population, or target person. No? Anong uri yan, sir? Is it probability or non-probability? That is a non-probability sampling. Convenient sampling is a non-probability. Ah, no? So it is easy to get participants and participants are readily available. So valid. Does convenient sampling employs bias? The answer is yes. Okay? Bakit? Kapag hindi siya favor sa tanong na yan, or kapag hindi siya, hindi siya pabor sa nasasagot sa inter or question na yan, hindi siya makukuha. Okay? Hindi siya magpaparticipate. Therefore, there is bias. No? Personal bias in terms of the researcher's point of view or also with the respondent's point of view. Kaya nga, nagkakura ng bias, bias sa convenient sampling. Pero very easy siya. No? Kung ayaw mo, edi wag. Kung gusto mo, okay. That's convenient. Available ba siya? Yes. Okay, no? Ah, let's go to purposive sampling. Ano ba talaga si purposive, sir? Purposive, my purpose. Di ba? Purposive, a sample is selected based on knowledge about the study and population. Oh, halimbawa, ang aking research ay nakatoon sa welding. So, my purpose is to notice or to know what are the feedbacks about welders on this specific innovation. Oh, no? Therefore, as if I'm going to take the sampling method or if I'm going to em employ sampling already, ang mangyayari nito is I will be choosing welders. Tama? No? Bakit? Kasi they will be the one that fit. They are the one who are fit to answer to my queries, questions. No? So participants are selected based on the purpose sample. At tapos, yung applicant who do not meet the profile are rejected. Bias pa rin ba, sir? Yes, bias pa rin. May bias pa rin dyan, no? This is prone to error and bias. No? So ayan. Ito, sir. Ito, sir. What are these types or what are those mga halimbawa ng purposive? Let me just give you some purposive sampling, critical sampling, critical case. Okay, critical. No? Cases where in which kailangan mo ng napakaraming impormasyon patungkol sa subject na to. Okay? Therefore, saan ka maghahanap? E mismo sa mga tao na medyo may kinalaman di sa trabaho ngayon. That also explains what is an expert case or expert sampling. Kapag expert sampling, mismo, this is a type of purposive sampling na kung saan yung mga respondents mo ay mga expert lamang sa isang field na yan. Okay? That is expert sampling. No? Ano naman yung ano naman yung extreme? Extreme case sampling coach. Extreme case sampling, okay? Kapag extreme case sampling, pag-usapan natin, it focuses on participants with unique or special characteristics. Oh, halimbawa ba kaya yung na Lahat lang na mga ano, lahat lang na mga LGBTQ members. Oh, yun lang talaga yung mga yun lang talaga yung mga um, audience mo diyan or respondents mo diyan, no? Kapag homogenous, the last one here is homogenous. Okay, homogenous isa lang. Meaning to say, my specific kana target of participant. Ano yung basis mo sir sa yung specificity? Maybe age, maybe sex, maybe gender. No? Oh, no? Iba yung age, ah, sorry, iba yung gender, iba yung sex, ha? Oh, tandaan nyo yan. Baka mag mag magkakalituhan pa kayo. No? Ano yung, ano yung, ano sir, ano yung, um, ano yung advantage ng purposive, purposive sampling? It is easy to make generalization. Bakit? Bakit siya easy to make generalization? It's because your respondents are true to that field mismo. Okay? Your respondents are or have experiences to the specific field. Therefore, yung mga ideas na yan ay galing mismo sa mga nakapag-experience na. No? There is purposive sampling. Halimbawa, no, sa welding na sample ko sa inyo, the tendency is that ang mangyayari kapag welding yung pag-usapan tapos yung mga 
samples ko or spandle ko are poro welders. Therefore, I have this higher chance to generalize about this specific topic. Bakit? They all experience what is welding. Unlike convenience, na pwede si letter A, wala siyang experience. Si letter B, meron siyang experience. Tama? Therefore, it would be very hard for me to generalize. Bakit? I have some respondents na walang experience sa welding. I have some, is, some respondents na may experience sa welding. How can I generalize further? When we talk about generalize, you try to saman. You try to 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 create this what do we call as um conclusion kumbaga, no? You try to nilalahat mo na, generalize nga, nilalahat mo na, no? Ano naman yung probabilistic coach? Kapag probabilistic Okay, when we talk about probabilistic type of research, or we call this one simply as probability sampling, ha? Probability sampling. Kapag probability sampling po, that's probability. Okay, kapag probability sampling pa mag-usapan natin, May ano po yan, may specific types po yan. First one is random. Oh. Ano yung benefit ng random? Ano si ano si random, no? Kapag random sampling, may tinatawag na simple random sampling, no? Kapag ah, kapag ano, sorry, no? Sorry, 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 sorry. Random sampling, no? That's random or simple random sampling, no? Kapag random sampling mag usapan natin, isa isa po doon is si sino? Si simple random sampling, SRS. What do you mean by simple random sampling? Simple random sampling is all about assigning number to a specific subject number generator. Meaning to say, lahat ay may chance na pwedeng mapili. That is random sampling. Equal chance. Pero that is time-consuming type of sampling. Na? Another one, coach, stratified sampling. So, meaning to say, kapag stratified strata, no, i-divide mo sila per strata, per population. May it be lahat ng female, lahat ng male, education level, ganon. No? Yun yung mga stratified sampling. Kapag systematic naman, under probability sampling, no? kapag systematic under probability sampling, ang nangyari dito is that uh, you try to generate no? lahat ng mga Lahat ng class number 3 ng bawat section sa first year, lahat ng class number 4 sa second year, ah, sorry, sa grade 7, grade 8, lahat ng class number 5 sa ano, sa grade 10, they will be the one to participate in my sampling. O yun, that is a systematic type of sampling. Random pa rin ba, sir? Yes, random pa rin yun. Ika, kaya nga lang, may system na sinusunod, may pattern na sinusunod. Okay? And last one po ng probability sampling and the random sampling is cluster type of sampling or cluster method. No? Almost similar sila sa stratified. Okay? Ang nangyayari nga lang is it's more on specifics. No? Nangyayari ito is nagiging clusterized na po. No? Nagiging cluster na po ang inyong mga ano, inyong, uh, inyong mga um, respondents. Halimbawa nito, sir, oh, tingin nyo dito yung during election, di ba? Di ba may cluster kayo during elections? Oh, yun po yun. Tapos ginagamit po si cluster natin kapag yung location natin, geographical location is napakalaki. Okay? Cluster na po yung tawag natin doon. The best answer here is no other than letter, letter A. Convenience. Bakit convenience, coach? Because of the word availability of time. Because of the word of the availability of time. That is convenience sampling. Ito. Which of the following groups of people would not qualify? Okay, sorry. Would qualify. Sorry ha, sorry. It should not be not. Okay. Would qualify, all right, as participants in phenomenological study. Which the following Groups of people would qualify as participants in a phenomenological study. Ito yung clue word mo dito, phenomenological study. Okay? 
you define first what is phenomenology or phenomenon. Di ba? Kapag phenomenon po, that talks about something that is observable or an for an extraordinary person. Okay? That's phenomenon. No? You, you had to do, okay, phenomenon is something that you observe, okay, with your own eyes. Observable, no? Kapag phenomenological research or study po, okay, nag-focus po yan sa experiences ng mga tao regarding sa isang phenomenon. That is po letter, that is po phenomenological study. Again, ha? Phenomenon is something that is observable, thing or from a person or an event. Okay? No? So, phenomenological research naman po, nag-focus po yan sa mga experiences regarding a specific phenomenon and how they interpret that phenomenon. Okay? Now, victims of martial law in 1972 to 1981. What is the phenomenon here? Martial law. Can this be an answer for the can this be an answer no for this uh, question the answer is yes pwede yan pwede yan no because they experience martial law okay they can they can tell what martial law was all right comfort women women who were repeatedly sexually abused during the world war 2 can they become your respondent in terms of your phenomenological study, the answer is yes. Okay? Kaya nga lang kung buhay pa sila ngayon. Pero if given a chance, this type of scenario, pwede po yun sila. Bakit? You have to go back to the definition of phenomenological study, which means they focuses on the experience of people. Therefore, dapat the people or the respondent themselves must be able to experience what was that phenomenon. Sir, survivors of the 2016 earthquake in Bohol, Philippines. Can this be? Yes. What do they have experienced? Therefore, the answer here is no other than letter D. All of the above. Okay? I hope I have made myself clear on this one. <sighs> no, yeah, no? Parang ang layo na nanabot natin, ah. Next question tayo. For Florence to be able to ethically research among the ITAS, Okay, for Florence to be able to ethically research among the Aitas, this will be the first critical thing that she must secure. Ah, ano po yung dito yung clue word dito? This first. Hindi po siya nagtanong ng sagot or hindi po siya nagtanong ng Ano lang, no, nang walang, ano, nang walang specificity. May specification sa dito, pinakauna mong gawin to conduct research about ITAS. This is more on indigenous people or IPs, tama? These are mga IPs po natin. Okay? Our indigenous people. Now, ano ang pinakaunang gagawin ni Florence? Sige daw. Comment down your answers. I will be taking a look on your answers on the screen. Sige daw. Okay. So, mm -hmm. may sumagot dito na letter B, permission to research among ITAS from the National Commission Indigenous People or NCITs. Okay. All right. Pwede to. Very good. The best answer here is no other than letter B. Pinakauna mong gagawin in terms of research for ethical standards because IPs are considered valuable no, sa ating society in terms of culture preservations. Tama? Now, so what are you going to do as a researcher? You must first ask the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples Commission. All right? National Commission on Indigenous People. No? na mag-conduct ka ng research about ITAS. Because, anong gagawin na doon, sir? You will be given the legalities and then the protocols. Alright? No? You, you will be given the legalities, protocols, tapos in terms of cultural protocol. No? Baka, mag baka pupunta ka doon sa mga ITAS, hindi mo alam kung ano yung pinasok mo. Baka paglabas mo, wala ka ng kamay. Pinutulan ka na. 
at least dumaan ka sa NCIP, no? Oh, at least dumaan ka diyan upang makaalam kung ano pa talaga yung mga pwede mong gamitin upang magkakapagpatuloy sa pag-aaral ng mga IPs natin. Okay? That is letter B, permission to research among ITAS the National Commission on Indigenous People. Okay, sir. The reason why random sampling is not employed in qualitative. Random, ha? Kapag random, this is more on bias. Okay? The reason for this one is hindi po siya pwede maging ano, no? Um, bakit hindi po siya ginagawa sa qualitative research si random sampling? Alright? Bakit hindi po ginagawa si random sampling sa ating research or quality research? Sige daw, sagot muna. Ah, anong sagot dyan? Ah? Okay. Ganito yan, ha? The reason why random sampling is not employed Tablet, ano? Tablet, charger ng tablet. Okay. The reason bakit hindi nagiging, ano, no? Hindi ipinapa-employ or hindi ginamit, dapat gamitin si qualitative research, no? Pinapagamit ng random sampling. It's because it could hardly generalize findings. Diba sabi ko kanina? During my example sa welding natin. Diba? Diba? Sabi ko ba sa welding, di ba? Sabi ko sa welding eh, no? The purpose is not to generalize findings. Okay, no? Ano po yung in extrapolated? Ano po yung extrapolated, sir? No? Eh, dito tayo nagkakano. So, during the board exam, especially prof ed concepts po, in the prof ed concepts, if we do not know the word, might be magkakamali tayo sa sagot. Ano yung extrapolate? Extrapolated. That means to extend. To extend its application. Okay? Extend its application is somehow the same word as generalize. Okay? It's somehow the same word as generalize. The results are to be generalized are to be generalized to the population, hindi po siya. No? No? Hindi po siya. Therefore, the best answer here is letter A. The purpose is not to generalize finding. No? Because it could not generalize findings po. Alright? No? So, ayan. Very good, Ma'am Jenny. No? Quali is specific. Pero quali specific, it's, ano pa rin eh, parang medyo broader concept siya. Kapag qualitative kasi, it's more on, ano, deeper understanding on the concept no while quantitative is more on databases background mo sa data no the purpose kasi ng qualitative research natin is describe understand and explain anong nangyari sa phenomena na yan di ba again qualitative research it explains describes tapos ex, um, ano no understand what happened to that specific phenomena or culture no? Hindi po siya ginagamit to predict an outcome. Hindi po siya ginagamit or control an outcome, no? Rather, it is for quantitative research. Si quantitative research magja-generate po yan ng factual, reliable data, no? Usually used for larger population or applicable for generalization. Okay? Yan po yung ating quantitative research. Thank you so much from Jenny, no? Ayan, very good. Uh, thank you so much from ating mga viewers sa ating um, uh, sa ating ano ngayon, YouTube ngayon. Sir, the greatest concern during an overt observation, patay tayo nito. Ah. Oh. Ano nga ulit yung ano? Ano nga ulit yung overt participation or overt observation? Ano nga ulit yung overt? Di ba? Oh, di ba? Ah. Uh, ano ulit yung overt? Overt participant. Kapag overt participant, what do you mean by that? 'Di ba? Ah. Uh, overt observation. That means, na the group na pinag-aaralan mo ay alam nila na they are being observed. Oh? 
the greatest concern during an overt participant observation. Ang tendency dito, no? The what, what happened here was that ano dito eh. Ito yung cause dito, no? Uh, I mean, ito yung ano, et, ito yung pinaka main clue dito, overt participant observation. No? Kapag overt participant po, this is more on oh, alam nila na sila ay pinag-aaralan. No? This is the group na kung saan they know that they are being studied or observed. Tama? Tapos kapag covert naman, kapag covert, pinag-aralan mo sila, pero sila na pinag-aralan mo, hindi nila alam na sila ay pinag-aralan. No? Ah. So, ano yari dito is that according to one of this effect, <laughs> okay, according to this one effect, once a person is being observed, a certain change of characteristics, no? once this one, a certain alteration of behavior characteristics ay nangyayari dito. Bakit? Kasi alam nila na sila ay pinag-aaralan. They are aware that they are being observed. Anong effect yan? Oops, wag nyo akong ano dito kasi nasa professional education to. Diba? Oh. Kapag si school principal dadaan dyan, at mag-stop over sa inyong klase, si teacher, magaling yan na magpalusot. Di ba? Magaling yan mag-change ng ano, no? Napakaganda ng discussion ni teacher, hindi nagagalit, mabait, smile, smile lang. Ganun yan. Kasi alam niya na si school principal ay nasa bintana, nakatingin, nag-observe sa klase. Anong effect yan? That is the same through with this research. Ano? Oh, what type of research? The, oh, sorry, what type of effect yan? That is po Hawthorne effect. Ah, oh, Hawthorne effect po yan, no? Ano po yung ano? What is then Goldilocks effect? Di ba lang yun yung Goldilocks and the three, ano? Three bears yata yun. Na Goldilocks and the three bears. Di ba? Oh, no? So, nangyayari nga doon is inoferan siya ng hot chocolate yata yun tapos cold chocolate hindi hindi siya nagano no hindi siya nag nag uh, pick up ng dalawa saan niya na pick up sir saan siya naging masaya doon siya sa comfortable sa ah oh, the goldilocks principle po yon no si goldilocks principle no because when uh, ano yun, when goldilocks no nakita siya ng bowl of por uh, sorry, porridge para yon no no it was then that she was happy because ah oh, doon niya siya pinili ng porridge na kung saan hindi siya mahinip siya nung mainit. Okay? Masaya siya doon. So, ano ba ba yung implication niyan sa research natin, teacher? Okay, so what is the implication to that one? No? Kapag Goldilocks principle po, ito po yung work satisfaction. When human being, ah, sige, mag-break tayo 2.30 po. Okay? Ah, no? When human being po, kapag ang human being ay um, hindi masaya sa kanyang trabaho, hindi po siya productive. No? Pero, Kapag ang isang being ay inspired, say for example, ikaw ay inspired na mag-aral dahil may jowa kang kasama, bawat mag-aral ka, that becomes a Goldilocks effect. Na? You try to focus more dahil you are inspired and you are on your most comfortable zone. Ah, di ba? That is the Goldilocks effect. Ano naman itong halo effect? Na? Kapag halo effect, known po to dito as halo error. First impression to, kumbaga. No? No? So, first impression effect po to. Kung saan, um, di ba, I think one of the example of halo effect is yung mga naka-nerd. Di ba? Uy, pag may nakita kang nerd, matalino yan. O, di ba? So, sa lahat naman nakita ng mga nerd, o, yan, matatalino yan sila kasi, kasi naka-eyeglasses yan sila. O, ayan, that's halo effect. What's, what's one of the yellow, hel, hel, halo effect po? Okay? Ayan. So, that is po the Hawthorne effect. Aha. Sige. Let's have a break first, dear teachers. We will get back on 12, uh, 2.30 po. Let's have a 10 minutes break. Then, let's get back 2.30. Na? I think we still have um, nine questions sa research. Then, the rest of the questions are on trainers, methodology, and assessment. Okay? I hope walang alis sa natin dito kasi nag-iisip pa ako kung i-public ba to or private. Ano? Sige lang. Nag-iisip pa si Sir Chan. Pero 
may the ano no. Ayan. So, let's have a break first. Well, let's get back 2:30. I hope walang aalis po ha kasi the trainer's methodology will be explained after eight questions po dito. All right. So, take a break first, teachers.
dear teachers. All right, so good afternoon once again. Let's get back, okay? Let's get back on our topic right away. No, asa na ngayon iba? All right, so thank you so much for viewing still, no? For sa pag hindi pag alis. Yeah, so the next question dito tayo. Sir, what if ganito? For the next items, identify whether the following items are sampling methods or describing a sampling method that is probabilistic or purposive. Okay? Kapag probabilistic, it's more on random. Again, probabilistic, probability, that is more on random. Hi, Ma'am Marilintan, sa lipot. Ayan, good afternoon po. Okay, purposive. Kapag purposive naman po, this is talks only on a specificity. May specific po kayo na sample dito. Okay? That's probab probability. That means na um, random. Tapos purpose the specific audience po natin dito. For your specific purpose. Eto, number one. Random, a uh, simple random sampling. Kapag simple random sampling, that talks on probabilistic sampling. There's probability sampling. Okay? Simple random. Oh, may random na nga. Okay, may random na nga siya. That is probabilistic sampling. This one, stratified purposeful. Oops, yung word mo dito ay purposeful. Okay, kung mag-stratified sampling ka lang, kung hindi purposeful ang gagamitin mo dyan, you can answer probabilistic. Pero since the word purposeful here, it will go to what we call as purposive. It defines what is purposive. This one said, requires computing for ideal sample size. Oops, ideal sample size. Oh, no? Nangailangan ka ng ideal sample size. Okay, computation of your ideal sample size. This falls under strategic sampling. And this is on probabilistic sampling. Okay, next, this one. Prone to bias. Prone to bias, that is? Both. No? Both po ang dalawa ay prone to bias po yan si probabilistic and purposive. You just have to adhere to reflexivity research and under the marketing para maging walang bias po yung ating research. Okay? That is po probabilistic and purposive. They are, both of them are prone to bias actually. Okay? Prone to bias and error. Next one. Hito tayo. Sir, considered as the best instrument in qualitative research. Okay? Bakit siya, sir? Okay? According to experts, this is the best instrument in qualitative research. Okay? So, even if you collect data, you understand the data, pero sino ba talaga yung pinaka-best instrument in a qualitative research? Is it the FGD, or is it the observation, the interviewer, or the researcher? The best answer here is the best instrument in qualitative research, that is researcher. Walang ibang answer kundi researcher, siya ang best considered as best instrument in a qualitative research. All right? Next question tayo dito. Sir, it is an act of claiming or using someone else's written work without due permission or acknowledgement from its author. No? An act of claiming or using someone else's written work. Ito, you claim not your own work and without acknowledgement from the author, that means you are, uh, diba? you are charged with or you fall under plagiarism. Okay, that is plagiarism. Ano yung bibliography? Bibliography, no? Bibliography is list po yun ng mga works. Alright? List of works on a subject or by an author, okay, that a work consulted to or to be used in your research paper. Yan? Yan po yung tinatawag na bibliography. Now, in terms of ident uh, indention, no? Sa bibliography po natin, Alright, so intentions and bibliography po, 
no in terms of putting bibliography in the context of your research you have to do the alphabetical type or alphabetical method okay you alphabetically arrange okay the different sources all right so again it is the author first the name of the, the author's name must be done alphabetically ano yung citation citation hold on all right okay sorry for that now let's go back to okay let's go back to citation and referencing again ha huh? kapag citation you try to acknowledge you try to identify for the reader kung saan mo kinuha ang source na yan okay all right no so maybe it be the idea or information or even the image that is called citation put on all right let's get to the next number this part no that part of the last chapter of the research paper wherein the findings are intentionally written such a way that one who is not learned okay one who who is not learned by the way who is not learned in technical research writing can understand no sir my my word ba na learned sir yes of course magbasa kayo ng dictionary no my word na learned okay na long legged ma learned no who is not learned no okay a learned or is not a learned individual in technical research writing can understand so sir conclusion by on findings like your summary ah uh, now you have to remember kapag eto yung tinatawag kapag conclusion po ang tinatawag natin no section po yan ng research no uh, section po yan ng research na kung saan it interprets the finding of the study you summarize you interpret no a section na po to dire karon ng reflection on the research objectives no the review sa mga key findings natin sa mga yung mga implications or objectives ng ating hypothesis yun po yung conclusions po natin now what are the, what, what are the findings by the way kapag findings po ang pag-uusapan no section po yan no ah uh, okay lang po ma'am Lionel Tango ba no hindi po ako makapagsabay sir sobrang hina po ng signal ko umulan kasi dito Okay, ingat po kayo diyan sa mga umulan na lugar ha. Make sure na hindi kayo malapit sa mga ano natin sa mga landslide prone areas. And don't worry po, um i-upload ko na po to. This is recorded by the way. All right, kapag findings po, no? Section po ito na kung saan, ah sorry, ah, kapag findings po, sections po na kung saan, okay? The researcher presents the results of the study in what way? That is through graph and visual presentations. Okay, graphs and visual presentations. All right, so section in the findings as well includes description, analysis of data that is collected or what happened during the collection of data. Now, ano yung recommendation? Kapag sinasabi mong recommendation sa research, kasi chapter 5 to eh. Chapter 5 of research na po ang recommendation. Nasa last part na po yan sila, no? Ah, so... The process that happens here is that kapag recommendation po usapan natin, no, the researcher no offers suggestions, proposals or advice base sa mga findings na nakuha nila sa kanilang studies, no? Ika nga nila, you ika nga nila sa research namin, di ba? By the way, uh, tapos na pala ako sa research ko na subject ano, sa aking master's class. So kaya um thankful ako sa aking professors nakuha to mga idea na to it's because i have learned a lot from him on this one okay so professor namin is daming mga ano eh ang dami niyang mga citation ang mga books no na ano so eto no um uh, advice based on findings sa kay mga conclusion ng mga studies natin so ang nangyayari dito our teachers sa recommendation is you try to propose based on what we have found uh, blah 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 so ganun mga bagay na yun okay now kapag eto yung gagamitin mo the answer here is summary Bakit, sir? Okay? Okay? The findings are intentionally written such a way that even one who is not learned, okay, uh, uh, who was not able to learn about technical research, no, can fully understand. Summary po ang sagot dito. And no other than that. This one, sir. Inferences. All right? These are inferences that summarize the findings as the answer to what was the central 
phenomenon is all about. Okay, answers. All right, answers to what was the central problem all about or phenomenon all about. What is the answer here? The answer here is conclusion. Okay, the answer here is conclusion. Findings is more on presentation of data lang eh. Okay, findings, you, you try to present your data through graphs and visual representations. Ito, enumerates what should be done to improve a policy, no? You enumerate, ikaw, nag enumerate ka. This is more on suggesting. At kapag suggesting po yung sagot dito, we try to, we, we tend, no? We tend to go on what do we call as recommendation. Okay, kapag suggesting, enumerating, that we try to adhere on what we call as recommendations. Ah, na? So sa mga nakapag-research na may mga research papers na po kayo, no, actually, you can relate to what this concept all about. Alright, so next question tayo. Sir, a brief description of the overall research. No? Huwag ka nang magbasa sa huli. Kapag brief description lang, no? Sir, brief description of what was the research all about. Okay? If you, if you wish to continue, ito yan. It was done. What was the result? And the results and their implications. No? It is a brief description of the overall research kung paano siya ginawa, ano yung mga resulta, at saka yung kanilang mga kahalagahan or implications. What have you learned on that? The answer here is no other than abstract. Okay? Abstract po ang tamang sagot dito and not a research report. Abstract, not research report. Okay, those are mga research concepts natin. Ah, sir, bakit hindi lumabas doon si ano? Hindi lumabas doon si qualitative, quantitative. Kapag qualitative is more on writings, observations, descriptions. Quantitative, there is more on numbers. Okay? Kapag sa yung research method, ginamit mo yung dalawa, that's already a mixed method. Tama? Uh, kapag ginamit mo yung dalawa, that's a mixed method. Kapag causal effect, sir, kapag ginamit mo yung cause and effect, that is the experimental method. Okay? Cause and effect is the experimental method. Ano yung method na ginagamit natin sa mga senior high school in terms of yung mga teachers na gustong magkakaroon ng direct answers? No? Panandali ang research na ng to answer directly the problem that existed in their community or in the school or in the classroom setting mismo. They are going to imply action research. Okay? And ano yung, ano yung process ng action research na ginagamit natin? It's the PDSA. Tama? The plan, do, study, and act. Okay? That is the PDSA under the action research. Let's get to know about trainer's methodology. Huh? No? Let's get to know about trainer's methodology. Other concepts, ay, ito pala, ah. sir, baka yung ano, sir, um, concepts kasi during the previous board exams on trainer's methodology, no? we were discussing, okay, we, we discussed trainer's methodology on that concept na kung saan yung concept po natin is Lower or low order thinking skills, no? Kaya na discuss ko na discuss ko yung PM for March. So balit we dwell on lower order thinking skills, meaning that kailangan kailangan nating mag upgrade into higher order thinking skills para po mailaban po natin ng September. Bakit yun po yung lumabas na patterns during the previous exams? Okay, now. Um, coach, lalabas po ba ang TM at research during the September licensure examinations for teachers? Hindi natin alam. We do not know what, go, what lies ahead. Hindi natin alam kung ano yung nasa loob ng mga isipan ng ating mga, uh, ng mga uh, professional board of teachers, yung mga tagagawa ng tanong. Okay? Uh, baka magpupokus na naman sila sa agriculture or fisheries. Tama, no? O baka sa research na naman kasi last time TM yung kadalasan na eh. Pero again, again po, wag po tayong magpakampante. Alright? So, hindi porke na sometimes naniniwala talaga ako na seasonal. No? Seasonal yung ano natin sa board exam. So, balit, uh, um, 
if you are a wise student, hindi ka po magano, no? If you are a wise student, hindi ka po mag-assume. Ngayon, ang lalabas ngayon, focus lamang ako sa agriculture and fishery arts at saka sa electricity kasi baka last previous exam, yung lumag, baka hindi nga hindi nalalabas. Ganang mga bagay na yun. Okay? And we should not just stick to that one. Dahil po, be wise. Okay? Study wise. Study wisely. Okay? Ayan. So, let's get back Let's go to trainer's methodology. Ito nga ha, sir, bakit nga pala na ano, bakit nga pala na isali si TM concept natin sa ating new TOS because of this what we call as trifocalization process or trifocalization na nangyayari sa tenan, no? So based on RA10533 curriculum, what happened here is that one of its mission no, is to let the students or the senior high school graduates be locally and globally competitive in terms of industry setting. Okay? Now, why, why TM is integrated into the curriculum? Bakit? Because teachers are sources of knowledge okay, of our students. Now, if they will not be trained how to handle their industry setting, the tendency is that we cannot achieve the mission. Okay, ang nangyari po is we cannot achieve the mission. All right? So that is po the reason why TOS or Trainers Methodology is being incorporated there. Let's have question number one. Yung iba bumalik, yung iba wala. Okay? Kapag may bumalik man, tapos may mga nandito, ano, tapos, sir, bumalik naman yan, sir. Oh, wag kayong aalis. Baka may naidagdag ako dito. No? Baka may naidagdag ako dito na hindi niyo alam. All right? At least, nadadagdagan yung mga informations na inyong makuha. Now, which step of the assessment process involves ensuring the assessment center is conducive to assessment processes? Kapag conducive po ang pinag-usapan po natin, this talks more in environment. Okay, wala ka na yung usapan dito eh. Conducive to the assessment process that talks about environment conducive is more uncomfortable ka no it um that's the reason why kapag when you're going to conduct no during this process establish first is you are really going to establish the assessment context okay assessment context this talks about uh informing or this is usually done before the assessment no before conducting the actual assessment or before conducting or handing over the manuals before handing over the um, the uh, uh, evidences no or the papers to your candidates okay now you have to tell them about what will happen establish first the assessment context kabuuang proseso para conducive po ang mangyayari sa assessment process. Smooth po ang mangyayari sa ating conducive uh, sa assessment process. Because you have to remember this one, that in the conduct of assessment process, we have before, during, and after processes processes. Kapag before processes or before the assessment process, mayayari nito is you introduce ilang oras, what is your name, saan ka galing, ano yung qualifications mo, at ano-ano yung mga series of competencies na ititake mo during or ititake ng mga candidates during that day. Alright? That is before. Now, ano mayayari sa during the assessment process? During the assessment process. What happened here is that assessment context during the assessment, ang nangyayari dito is you gather pictures, you observe the demonstration if the competency is being carried out in its utmost proficiency and if they have followed this what do we call as standards. That happens during the assessment process. Now, what happened after the assessment process. Oh, after the assessment process, dito na pumasok yung tinatawag nating, tinatawag nating evaluation. 
Alright? Dito na papamasok yung announcement. Announcement of ano? Announcement of the passers. And you have to remember that in the announcement of passers, dear teachers, dalawang letters lang po. Sorry. Alf, um, alphabetical po. No? Alpha. Ang grading. Not numeric. It's alpha, not numeric. All right. So alpha means to say competent or not yet competent. This is alpha rating. All right. No, that's during or after the processes. Now, after the process, I mean, again, no, after the process, bibigyan po. Oh, kapag tinatanong kayo, what will the candidate receive after the assessment process? Oh, di ba? Ah, oh. kung sa board exam, dadalhin niyo yung NOAA ninyo. Notice of ano ba 'yun? Ano yung NOAA, no? Not notice of assignment ba 'yun? Or sa kalimutan ko na, no? So, during your assessment process, dear teachers, no? After ka po makapasa, no? Bibigyan ka po ng number, no? Oh, ano hold on ha. Masasamit inom na ako to big sadlet. Ted lang. Ayan. Sorry. Bibigyan ka ng golden trophy. <laughs> uh, anong ibibigay sa'yo? Sorry, get, let's get back. No? Anong ibibigay sa'yo, Tesla? Ibibigay sa'yo ng assessor mo. Bibigyan ka ng car. Ayan. No? Sir, after pala, sir, ng assessment namin, may cars na ba kami? Yes, may cars na kayo. Mayaman si Tesla. No? Bibigyan po kayo ng cars. No? Mga sasakyan. Ano yung mga kalugan ng cars, sir? That is the competency assessment result summary. No. Competency result summary po ang ibibigay ni test the assessor sa inyo. Hahawakan niyo po yan at yan po yung gagamitin ninyo bilang resibo sa pagkuha ng inyong national certificate sa mga provincial offices ng TESDA natin. Again, ang CARS po ang siyang naglalaman, ang siyang ticket upang makuha ang inyong NC or National Certificate. Okay? Ano ulit yung CARS? That is the Competency Assessment Result Summary. Alright? So this is your gateway. No? Sir, magkano yung ano? No? Magkano yung ibabayad mo na ano na na 50 pesos, no? You prepare 50 pesos for your certificate um ana pagkuha mo doon. All right, so yan po yon. Go uh, hello Sir jo John Dexter sa boss ano nanood para sa atin ngayon Sir Dexter, no? Golden trophy. Yeah. So thank you so much Sir Dexter, no? Ayan, so cars po ang ibibigay. Now, Tandaan po natin na sa ating tinatawag na oh, sa ating tinatawag na assessment day. Subalit wala siyang gagawin even pag perma ng cars, hindi po siya ang gagawa cars or certificate of assessment result summary. It is only for the okay, for the assessor and your assessment center manager. Yan po yung cars po natin. Okay? So, ito po yung present mo upang magkuha ka ng national certificate. But going back to the question, conducive to the assessment process, the answer here is letter A. Establish the assessment context. Ayan, which is the qualification of a competency assessor? Tandaan nyo po, teachers. Competency assessors, not a qualification. Okay? Before ka makakuha no, ng National Certificate for Assessorship at sa 
Structural Treaty Vet Training Certificate, okay, NTTA and NTTC, no? ang gagawin mo po dito is dapat meron ka muna ang Trainer's Methodology Certificate. Next, you must have a Certificate of Competency in Conducting Competency Assessments under na po yan ni TM Certificate. Hindi po six months. Because according to rule, in Trainer's Methodology, Methodology certificate, you must have 24 months of industry experience or approximately two years in industry experience. Okay, next. Which is a role of an assessor during the assessment period? Ito, di mo sabi ko kanya, di ba? B, D, at saka A. In the assessment process, we have three Faces. No face, but face, face. Ayan. Okay? In the assessment process, may tatlong faces po tayo. Alright? That is before, during, and after. Now, what is being asked here is you are trying to ask about the, you are asked, I mean, about during the assessment period. And dito ka sa gitna. Therefore, ano ba yung ginagawa mo during the assessment process in this context. No? Sir, make evidence plan. Actually, this, this does not result to during. Eh, no? Make evidence plan. Actually, make evidence plan is not about the assessment. Okay? Pero, actually, yung iba namang context, nagsasad sila na, sir, merong make evidence plan on the very beginning of your demonstration. That's already the make evidence plan dito. No? All right. Sir, record assessment through photo documentation. Actually, pwede ito sa assessor if he wishes to, pero hindi po trabaho ng ating assessor na mag-conduct ng photos na documentation. No? Usually sa mga processing officers, sa atin tinatawag na mga uh, aides, no? helpers sa atin dyan, ayan. Sir, select candidates who will assess the evaluation process, okay? who will be assessed during the assessment. Hindi po ito trabaho ng ating assessor crash this out. Because ang trabaho po natin, ang trabaho po nito ay ito lamang po, ay tumamayari ni processing officer. Okay? The best answer here or most plausible answer here is what we call as letter D. Review assessment decisions against evidence plan and, and tools. Alright? That is the best answer here. Bakit? Ikaw as an assessor, dapat you have to review assessment decision against evidence plan and tools na ginamit mo. Ito yung pinakamabigat na role mo during the assessment period. Alright. So, mabilis lang po ba? Sa mga nabilisan lang po dyan, okay. No? So, I hope nakapag, ano kayo, ano? nakapag uh, uh, subaybay kayo. Nakapagsunod kayo. Ito. Which is, which is an, well, ano, which is an acceptable reason for an assessor to adjust a candidate. Oh, acceptable reason for an assessor to adjust to a candidate. No? Ang nangyayari kasi dito is that ang assessor or during the time na magkakaroon ka ng assessment, ano to eh, nakakaba. No? Feeling of excitement or sadness or parang ano ka, parang you are not comfortable during exam na dito. Now, as an assessor, of course, affected na yung brain mo. Di ba? Si assessor mo, parang terror pa yung iba. No? Takot ka sa assessor mo. So, nangyayari is na wawala ka tuloy sa concentration kasi first impression mo pa lang si assessor, nerd na, parang matitas, nakasimangot na, uy, medyo si assessor, parang ano to ah. Oh, masungi to si assessor. So, nangyayari is na takot ka na. na Di ba? Oo. Oh. So what happened there is that ano yung, ano yung acceptable reason for an assessor to adjust to a candidate as an assessor? Ikaw bilang assessor. The answer here is letter A. Okay. Sir, language barrier. Pero di ba sir, language and literacy and dun po yan sa ating data gathering sheet? Yes, and dun po yan sa chapter 1. No? or on the beginning of establishing a training. Pero you have to remember, dear teachers, that in basic competency, foster inclusive education. 
foster inclusive learning. And foster inclusive learning there corp incorporates, no? Okay, incorporates is what we call as the language. And that is you as an assessor, dapat kang marunong magtagalog upang mas maintindihan ng iyong estudyante ang iyong mga sinasabi during the review. So during the interview. Which is not a basis for competency judgment. Dito, di ba? A competency is a skill performed with standards. No? Sir, are you going to certify competence? Yes, through observation, through demonstrations. Sir, determine training gaps. Pwede yan, no? Should be a basis for competency judgment. Because kapag training gaps yung pag-uusapan natin, nakikita po natin ito sa ating DGS. Ano nga natin DGS? Data gathering sheet. Si data gathering sheet, that is an equivalent sheet for personal data sheet. Again, DGS is an equivalent form for personal data sheet. Kaya nga lang, ang andito po sa DGS, ayun po yung tinatawag nating mga, mga language and literacy, including the type of learner according to Ganye. Are you a theorist, activist, rea, um, uh, reflector, or uh, pragmatist? No, training gap, no? recognition of prior learning as well. Kung anong competency ang pwede mong pag-aralan. But the, not, the, the thing here that na hindi kailangang isali is the test equipment. Okay? Test equipment. Ito, bumalik na sa tanong. What is not involved or who is not involved in the evaluation of the assessment process? That is the processing officer. Okay? Processing officer. Okay? Ah. Sir, kailangan ba dito si test the representative? The answer is yes. Test the representative is very much needed. Pero kailangan ba siyang makialam? Wala siyang pakialam dyan. No? Nood-nood lang. Ngayon yung buhay na test the representative. Now, the follow-up question. Can the assessment start without can the assessment start without the test the representative? The answer is no. Kahit mag-alauna mag pa yan dyan, mag-alas dos pa yan dyan, andyan na si, andyan na si test the test the ano si test the assessor tas wala pa si test the representative hindi talaga mag-start ang inyong tinatawag na assessment process okay now ano yung ilalagay oh eto ha sir si Pedro is one of the candidate para mag-take ng assessment oh ha Pedro is one of those who did not uh, uh, is one of those candidates who will take the assessment. Now, it happened na si Pedro ay hindi nakarating on the day of the assessment. Ano ang ilalagay sa report ng ating assessor? Ah, di ba? Pedro is a candidate during the assessment process. But Pedro was not able to attend on the day during the assessment. What is the remark to be written in the CARS of or certificate um, uh, uh, of assessment result summary? No? Okay. Ano yung ilalagay sa CARS ng ating assessor? Is it N, Y, C, not yet competent? Or is it absent? What should be the rating or what should be the remarks on the cars kapag si Pedro ay hindi dumalo on that day? Not yet competent or absent? This is a no-brainer question pero nangyayari ito during the process. What are you going to do as an assessor? As an assessor.
professor, you put the word absent and not not yet competent. Again, you put the word uh, not the word yet. Okay? Yan po yung katandaan nyo. Kap absent talaga ang ating candidate. Absent po talaga ang ilalagay natin. Okay? Hindi po siya. Ano siya magiging not yet competent? How can he be not yet competent na hindi nga siya nag-perform ng kanyang skills dahil siya ay absent? Di ba? Si not yet competent lang po ay inilalagay mo siya sa CARS or sa no, um, uh, assessment result and summary if and only if nakapag-take siya ng assessment pero bagsak siya. Okay? Ha? No? Ganun po yung mga bagay na yun. Ha? Kapag nakapag-take ka ng assessment tapos bagsak ka, that, that's the time you're going to, as an assessor, ikaw ay lalagyan ng NYC. Pero kapag ikaw ay hindi dumalo, kapag siya ay hindi dumalo o hindi nag-attend sa assessment day na yan, never siyang lagyan ng NYC. You have to put it there absent. Ah, anong gagawin ni candidate? What is the role of candidate during the assessment process? Anong role ni candidate during the assessment process? He has to take all the in the instructions no may tanong kasi doon eh who will take all the instructions during the assessment process who will execute all the instructions process or instructions during the assessment process it should be the candidate okay it should be the candidate all right no so assessment center manager of course ay yung pinaka head sa assessment center natin Okay. Now, ang ating assessment center pala, okay, by the way, ang ating facility, ah, no? ito ha, ang ating facility po ay may dalawang uri. We may become a training center at time we can also be what do we call as assessment center uh -huh. hindi porque training center ka when ka na magiging assessment center hindi rin porque magiging uh, hindi hindi rin porque naging assessment center ka magiging training center ka magkaiba po ang kanilang qualifications for approval uh, approval no again training center has different qualifications to be approved. Assessment center has different qualifications to be approved as well. Okay? So magkaiba po yan. Pwede yan pang training center, pero hindi siya pwede maging assessment center. Na? Na? Yung ibang assessment center, pwede siya maging assessment center, pwede siya pwede maging uh, training center. Bakit? May iba't ibang mga papeles or documents na kailangan mong makomply bago makomply mo. Or pwede ba sir na ang training center maging assessment center at the same time? Pwede yan sila. No? O pwede, pwede yan. yan talaga sila. Alright, so ayan. That is all about evaluation or assessment processes. Sinabi ko na lahat. Sir, what should be done when getting done in a feed? Actually, should be pala. Should not be done. Okay? Which should not be done when giving a feedback. Ah, tandaan nyo po yung feedbacking styles or scheme po natin. In terms of feedbacking schemes, we have the bun, pati bun. Plus, minus, plus. Pasok na pasok. P and P. Ah, no? Positive negative and positive. So, ano now, in giving feedback to the candidate, ano ang hindi mo dapat gawin? Sir, discuss di, discuss agreement or disagreement with the decision. Pwede mo siyang gawin dyan during the feedbacking. Now, usually, as an assessor, magtatanong ka kasi nyo, no? Do you agree with my decision? Tapos, okay, uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yun, ganun bagay na yun, no? Letter D, start by asking the candidate to judge how well 
cor- um, uh, how well he or she performed. Pwede ba itong gamitin? Yes. Okay? Pwede itong gamitin na sa concept because ikaw, as a candidate, you know how you performed well during the process. Okay? So pwede ba itong, can we use this type of method during the feedbacking? The answer is yes. No? No? Letter C. Inform the candidate of your proposed final decision. Dapat ito niyong malaman. No? Dapat itong i-inform si candidate. Kasi baka makatunganga yan dyan, magbuong gabi na, wala pa siyang alam, nag-dismiss na kayo. No? The answer here is letter B. Focus on the task the candidate wasn't able to perform so that he or she will improve. Dahil po, And po dito is positive, negative, positive. Therefore, you have to do it. Ayan. Sino kaya ito? Nanood pa rin sa aking channel. Pero LPT na. No? Anon con content. Hi, Sir Chan. LPT na po ako. Hi, teachers. Can you still hear me? Ano? Let me share my screen. Ah. Uh, hold on. No, wala kasi. Ah, sige. Sorry, ha. Nawala ako ng konti. Ewan ko anong nangyari. No, I was just actually disconnected right away. No, hindi man lang nagpaalam si ano. Hindi man lang nagpaalam si uh, si Zoom, no? Man na na-disconnect siya, na na-disconnect niya ako. Ayan, thank you so much po. All right, thank you so much for staying still in my page right now. Even though we're discussing two hours already. Okay, principle of assessment and dito po yun siya sa assessment of learning po natin. That is under professional education subject. Pero sir, bakit po naisali po yan dyan sa ating dinatawag na TM? Kasi TM, tambal po niya si assessment. Bakit? Hindi po magiging successful ang isang competency without assessing the learner if hindi pa siya, if hindi siya competent or competent na. Ako tama ba? <laughs> yeah. No? No? So, tambal po si uh, ass- competency at si assessment. Dahil it cannot certify, no? If the student, no? It cannot certify if the student knew, uh, knew well about the topic, no? Kung walang assessment. Same lang sa exam natin, di ba? Same lang yung sa ating board exam, sa sa mga classroom exams, no? How can you know? How can you measure if, no? Your students really learn during the process. Assessment of learning, assessment, assessment as learning, assessment for learning. Diba? As of and for. Tandaan niyo po yun. No? Those are mga types of assessments. Now, let's talk about principles of assessment. Now, principles of assessment, marami-rami yan sila. Pero, focus on the four one. Fairness, flexibility, reliability, and validity. Okay? Isahin po natin itong mag-discuss tayo dito. Validity. Diba? Kapag validity po yung pinag-usapan natin, no? in the principle of validity, it refers to the extent to which the assessment measures what what it intends to measure. That is validity, tama? Uh, diba? The validity is validity 
we measure what we intend. It is sir, that talks about consistency. Tapos dependency. Tapos stability. Po yung reliability po natin. Now, flexibility. Are you, are you going to be flexible? Ano ba yung flexibility na yan? Kapag flexibility po, it is ability to adapt and accommodate and assessment method of the learners and candidates natin. That is po flexibility. Ano naman yung fairness? Kapag fairness po, ito po yung nag-provide ka ng equal opportunity and treatment sa lahat ng mga candidates mo. Halimbawa, no? In terms of giving assessment, dear teachers, you have to remember that you should be objective and not subjective. I hope you understand what is the difference between the two. No? Kapag objective, that promotes fairness. Kapag subjective, that promotes bias. Ha? Kasi subjective, kasi di ba? have to only answer in your point at mutually convenient time. Convenient time dito eh. Mutually convenient time. Convenient sa isang trainee, convenient sa isang trainer. You have to remember the principle number nine. Uh, ang tanong na to ay sumagot sa principle number nine ng CBT or competency-based training natin. Ano nga ulit yung principle number nine? That is multiple entry and exit. That talks or that promotes assessment, that promotes flexibility. No? Ah. Ano ba yung pinapapatig doon, sir? Ng principle number nine ng CBT that promotes flexibility. No? Say for example, um, we have John and Jay. No? At Jim na lang. Jim at Jay. Jim is a learner na kung saan pala ano no may problema may problema sa ano may may problema sa ipapagayatin emotional instability no habang si Jay is a really good student now the tendency was that si Jay nakapagtapos na siya ng kanyang NC2 habang si Jim wala pa now si Jim by by April umalis lumabas sa training tapos may ano na Si Jim is lumabas sa training, nakapagtapos siya ng competency number 2. No? Tapos bumalik siya sa training pag August. Now, does he need, no? Does he need to go back to competency, competency number 1? Hindi na. Since he had already taken competency number 2, so kapag babalik siya sa training, he needs to get back not anymore number 1 but already to number 3. Okay? That talks about principle number 9, flexibility. Okay, the answer here, convenient time and situation promotes flexibility. Sir, work assistance is provided in the event of work emergency. Kapag emergency ang mag-uusapan natin, nagkakaroon ng emergency, what will happen if plan A will not work? No? What will happen if plan A will not work? What will you do? Kung during your presentation, wala kang lap or walang, walang kuryente. Diba? That's, that talks about contingency. Okay? When plan A doesn't work, okay, invoke plan B. Okay? Choose plan B. And if plan B doesn't work, go to plan C. And if plan C don't work, umuwi ka na lang matulog sa bahay niyo. Productive ka pa siguro. Diba? That is contingency management skill. Ano po tong apat na to? These four are what do we call as dimensions of competency. Okay? What is dimension of competency? This is an area of competency where in which if you if really competency have or if a certain skill, no, has been carried out. Iyan po yung dimensions of competencies po natin. Therefore the answer here is letter C. Contingency management skills. This one, sir. Evidence gathering method, a collection of work samples of the candidate. O, oh, ba? Professional education subject under po to saan? Saan po ba to? Um, assessment of learning. Assessment of learning, assessment for learning, assessment as learning. No? This is under portfolio. Walang ibang sagot to, ah. Kapag 
com collection of work samples of the candidates. All right? Kapag collection of the samples of the candidates, yun po yung tinatawag nating portfolio because it is only the portfolio that contains mga work samples natin. Ah, no? Ayan, I hope okay pa kayo dyan. Let's proceed to the next question. What's the planning tool that classifies the evidence requirements to provide attainment of competency and the methods to be used in gathering evidences? Oh, planning tool. Na? Last time, yung pinag-uusapan nila yung session plan. Na? Baka naman ngayon, iba na. Now, so planning tool that classifies the evidence requirements to, provo to prove attainment in competency and methods to be used in the gathering evidences. What would be the best answer here? Ah, yung tanong, ando na mismo sa, ah, yung sagot is ando na mismo sa tanong. Di ba? Saan na makikita yung mga evidence requirements? Di ba? Ando niya sa plano eh. Ando niya sa plano. No? Blueprint kumbaga, pero we are talking about evidences here. Therefore, it should be letter C, evidence plan. Okay? The answer here is no other than evidence plan. All right. What about here? Ah. Very basic. Very basic to na tanong eh. Which component of competency standards defines the circumstances or context in which work activities are being performed? Na? Ah. Which of the component of competency standards defines the circumstances or context in which the work activities na, are to be performed? Kapag unit title, dear teachers, you just have to analyze, you just have to question it. No, no, no. Not to question, but Simply to ano, no? Simply to to um simply to define it as it is. Unit title, the title of the unit. Okay, evidence guide, no? What are the uh, what are the ko, ano? What are your guide in terms of giving grades or giving um feedbacks? Unit descriptor, what is the description about that unit? Range of variable. Meaning to say, these are conditional statements. Kapag range of variables po, this talks about conditions. No? Conditions na kung saan, this refers to the work activities are to be performed. Anong hangganan? Anong gagamitin? What is the time limit? Yung mga ganong bagay na yan. Those are mga range of variables. This one, sir. Rule of evidence. Marami na ito yung rule of evidence natin dito. No? Kapag rule of evidence ang pag-uusapan, no? this ito yun, no? focus only on evidences. Ah. Kapag authentic evidence, that means na mismo ang gawa na yan ay gawa mismo sa bata. Gawa mismo sa kanya at hindi gawa ng kanyang pair na napagtulong sa kanya. That is authentic. Alright? Recent. Kapag ang gawa ba yan ay ngayon lang yan? No? Oh. Kapag ang gawa ba yan ay nagkakaroon or that evidence or that activity no? Um, employs, adheres to the recency of our activity. Va sufficiency. Kapag sufficiency that talks about nagawa ba talaga niya lahat ng mga element na andun mismo sa isang competency that is sufficiency validity na follow niya ba no? iba naman talaga yung teachers yung nagawa niya compare sa na follow niya ba di ba di ba kung na follow niya that means that means na no i i i mean kung nagawa niya hindi siya assurance no na na follow niya ang ano yung standards Pero kapag na-follow niya lahat, that talks about validity. No? Nagiging valid na siya because it measures what it intends to measure. That's validity. No? So the answer here, does, that, does it refer to validity or recency or authenticity? But the best answer here focuses on sufficiency. Okay? 
the answer here focuses or evolves on sufficiency that is on letter C. Okay, it is sufficient. Not authentic po, ah. Not authentic. Okay. Sir, select vehicle to be moved or repositioned. Anong tawag dito, teachers? Uh, anong tawag dito sa ating ano? Anong tawag natin dito sa ating competency standards? This is what do we call as? Ano to? Competency. Ah, this is a sufficient uh, competency. No? Competency po yan. No? Select vehicle to be moved or repositioned. That is a competency. And every competency, it should be performed with skills and standards. Tama? Now, ilang competency meron? Isa lang. Therefore, if there is only one competency that only refer to task skill. That only refer to task skill. Alright? Shout out sa ating mga viewers ngayon ano, na hindi pa talaga umalis. Salamat po sa inyong pagsubaybay. Ah, Ayan, baka yung iba na wala ng signal no? or in the middle of our topic, baka na wala sila ng signal or kumbaga, hindi rin alam. No? Uh, but, but at least they have learned something from this afternoon. Ah, no? So, sir, medyo seryoso po kayo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry ah, seryoso talaga mo discuss sir Chan. Ano, mabilis talaga to kasi parang ano to eh, parang um, para parang ano, ganoon lang. All right. So, ayan, no? So, sorry hindi ko makapag-crack ng joke kasi seryoso akong tao, no? Ah. Uh, 'Di ba? Seryoso akong tao kaya kaya naging seryoso ako sa kanya. Okay. <laughs> ayan, which is not a trait of competency based assessment. Trait Trait, kumbaga, kung hindi mo alam yung trait, sige na lang. Ah, no? Alright, no? Kung hindi po trait, ah, kung hindi mo alam yung trait, sige. Let's try to talk about, ang gano, lagay na lang. Kung hindi mo alam yung trait, sige, ipaparagay natin yung characteristics. Ah, di ba? Oh, yung characteristics of a competency-based assessment. Pero yung tanong dito is not. <laughs> Coach Jan, seryoso di ba ako? Di ba seryoso ba ako, Coach Jan? Di ba? Nung nagsasama kami ni Coach Jan ito sa Cebu, nung nag-ano siya, nag-ikot sa Cebu, kasi mayaman doon si Coach Jan. No? Nung nag-ikot siya sa, sa, sa Cebu, wala talaga kami pinag-usapan ng mga questions sa board exam. Kundi puro lang talaga tawa ng tao. <laughs> no? So wala kami pinag-usapan ng mga question ng board exam. No? Coach, paano ba ito sasagutan ng ganito? Hindi di namin niya pinag-uusapan during the time na nag uh, ano kami dito na no na um, nag break kami no nag health break kumbaga no pinag-usapan lang namin is yung mga ano yung mga ma, mga nakakatuwang bagay no we did not kapag, kapag nagsasama kasi yung mga ano kapag yung nagsasama kasi yung mga yung mga lecturer ang pinag-usapan nila ay hindi talaga lectures no pinag-usapan nila is yung mga ibang bagay na naman ting naman kasi kapag puro lecture sa pag-usapan din. Ayun. So not ha not. Ito ha tandaan niyo to teachers. Kapag sa board exam, you have to remember na kapag may word na except talagang i-emphasize niyo 'yan. Kasi minsan yung mindset natin is magiging ano to eh, magiging kabaliktaran yung ating mapili. Ano? Okay? Oh, kagaya ngayon, may sumagot na letter A. Ah, oh, di ba? May sumagot na letter A, emphasis on work activities required by the industry. Is this a correct statement? Yes. Very true po yan, teachers. That is a very true, true statement. Bakit? Di ba kasi saan ba kapag mag-graduate ang mga bata, no? kapag mag-graduate ang mga bata, saan po ba sila magtatrabaho? Di ba sa industry? Di ba? At isa pa, ang mission po or ang ano po nito, di ba? Ang backbone po ng ating competency-based natin ay mula sa industry-based standards. Di ba? Industry. Di ba? So, emphasis on work activities required by the industry. Kaya nga, kapag maluto ka ng tinapay, what is the industry standard kapag ganito yung gagamitin mo? Alright? 
So, wag nyo kayong wag nyo kalimutan ha. Kapag competency based po dapat yung industry ay related dapat siya sa industry. 10533 RA 10533 in its mission that the learners under the K-12 curriculum graduates will be able to work locally and globally competitive in the industry field. Yan po yung pinag-usapan sa ating competency. Work-based, kumbaga, according to Coach John. No? Ayan. So, teachers, kung yung kalimutan to, this is a very correct answer. This is one of the characteristics. Letter B, multiple forms of evidences used to make assessment decision. Very true po si letter B. Bakit true si letter B, sir? Ilang decisions or ilang evidence dapat makuha during assessment? Tatlo. Ano yung tatlong assessments na yun? Written, demonstration, and oral questioning or interview. Multiple ba yun? The answer is yes. Therefore, letter C is not the correct answer here. Bakit? Sabi ko kanina, the passing criteria is not numeric, but it's alphabetical. That means... It should not be based on marking scales, but on the alpha or alpha scales. Okay? It should be alpha. That means C or N, Y, C. Sir, what about on the process? What about on the process of collecting? Nag-collect ka pa, sir, ng mga evidences. Are you not going to grade it via numbers? The answer is no. You are not allowed to give the number. What are you going to do? You have to do the Likert, Likert scale method. No? Likert, sorry. The like, not, 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 not the Likert scaling, but the yes or no scaling. Ayan, no? Ito yun dito. Oh. Guide questions. Guide. Ayan, no? Question number one. The, did the learner able to perform the function of blah, blah, blah? Kapag mag yes, kapag na, na follow niya, the answer is yes. Hindi po siya 4, 3, 2, 1. Hindi po ganun mga bagay na yun. Ha? Wala pong numbers na nasa dito. Nasa dito. Number two guide question. Did the learner able to work, uh, to practice work with safety? Yes. Uh, question number three. Did the learner able to practice sanitation or something like that? No? Check. All right, no? So, yan po yung ating tinatawag na oh, parang checklist scale. Thank you so much, Sir JR. No? <laughs> Ang tagal ko na kanito. That is the oh, that, that is the checklist scale po yan. Therefore, it should be letter C. That is not a characteristics of the competency-based assessment. So, what about letter D? The assessment is individual. There is no comparison among others. The answer for this one is very true. No? individualized po ang assessments po natin, teachers, ha? Hindi po siya by group, hindi po siya by pair. Okay? Ah, kung meron mang iba dyan, nung mga ano yun, mga previous years pa yun, no? mga nag, ano yung mga, mga ibang assessors, no? na mag, nag-groupings nag yung ibang assessors. Pero usually talaga, this is an individual assessment. Bakit? Kasi, to become an assessment center, you must have at least 10 equipment good for 10 person. 10 equipment good for 10 persons. Okay? Bakit? Ang maximum, no? Ang maximum number of candidates during the assessment is only 10 person. Okay? Ah. Ah, uh, ayan ha. So, eto kasi, um, Sir, CBT individualized or self-paced, that is talking about training. No? CBT po yon. Sa CBT po, competency-based training, that is individualized and self-paced. Right now, we're talking here naman kasi about the CBA. Diba? CBA, that is competency-based assessment. Sa competency-based assessment din po is individualized. The same lang po sila ni CBT. Okay? Ayan, oh, matatalino itong mga batang po. Ah. Ayan. So, thank you so much, dear teachers. The answer here is no other than letter C. The passing criteria are based on marking scale 
is not a characteristic of a competency-based assessment. Heto, sir, which is not a component of competency standard. Pak, ganon. Huh? Sir, which is not a component of a competency standard. Element component to, dapat to kung ano yung objective niya. Di ba? Alam niya dapat kung ano yung gagawin niya. Range of variable dapat magiging kasali to. Bakit range of variable? This will entail how to handle a specific situation or, or how to handle specific competency with regards to tools and equipment. No? How to proceed with the competency, with the use of tools and equipment. What are the tools and equipment to be used to conduct that competency? Kaya dapat sa maging component ng ating CS or competency standards. Sir, performance criteria dapat kasali yan. Bakit kasali yan siya? Dahil you should be, um, dapat alam nyo kung paano i-rate. No? Alam nyo kung paano bibigyan kayo ng grades. That's performance criteria. Ang hindi po kasali dito or not necessarily, not necessarily is dito si performance recording. Performance recording is never included in competency standards. No? Sir, which is not a part of assessment package. Oh, dito, dito tayo, dito tayo. No? Ano ba ang mga hindi kasali or sino, or ano dito, ang hindi kasali sa assessment package? Teachers, kapag nakarinig kayo ng assessment, ilalagay niyo po sa inyong mga isipan na this is the time na kukuha na kayo ng exam. Okay? Assessment kasi siya. No? Ano yan rito? Oy, kapag assessment, andun si assessor, sampo lang kami, may test the representative, wala siyang ginagawa kung di manood lamang, tapos before before the process, dapat sasabihin ni assessor kung ano yung mangyayari. During the process, si assessor ang ang buong gagawa ng proseso. During a uh, mag-upsis si assessor that during the after the process is magkaroon decision making, ganun. No? Yun yung assessment process natin. Now, so alin dyan ang hindi kasali? Very good. The answer here is letter C. Registry of workers assessed and certified. Okay? This is our WAC kasi. Ano dapat ang nalagay sa letter C? No, sige. Kapag tatanggalin ko dito, katong which is a part of the assessment packet. Evidence guide should be a part. A rating sheet should be a part. Specific instructions should be a part. What, ano yung kulang? Ano yung kulang? Isa, na-mention ko yun kanina. Yung ibibigay, no, yung matatanggap ninyo bilang resibo. No, Nakapag-take kayo ng exam at inyo yung ipapalit kapag kukuha na kayo ng certificate sa provincial office. Ano ang tawag doon? Sasakyan yun. That was cars. Okay? Cars dapat ang andon. It should be the cars. No? Ah. So, yun po yun dapat ang andon mismo sa inyong mga... Ah. Di, ano, ano nga rin yung cars natin? That is the competency assessment result summary. No? Ah. Yan po yun. Dapat cars po ang nasa letter C sana. Hindi po si Arwak. Alright. Ah. Sir, which is an example of an extension question? Di ba? Kapag, ah, kapag extension question, dear teachers, ito yung uri ng evidence method na ginagamit natin during the oral question or interview na kung saan, parang may ano ba? Parang may mga parang may ibang paraan paano sagutan, no? Ah. Oh. Sir, is it letter A? If an earthquake happened, would you take this is a safety question? No? This is a safety question. Oh. Letter B. What are the specified procedures or steps to change the battery oil? These are procedural questions. Okay? These are procedural questions. Letter D, sir. What would you do in the event of unexpected combustion? This is also this contingency or safety question. 
no? Contingency or safety questions, no? A and D are example of contingency and safety questions, no? Letter B is an example of a procedural question. Letter C is an example of extension question, no? Extension question to, bakit? What if you are you're using cassava flour instead of all-purpose flour? Naku, napakaraming napakataas na sagot nito, no? What will happen if, no? Ganong mga bagay na yon, no? What if, ayon? That is A or that is an example of an extension question. The answer here is letter C. Eto tayo, no? Not a basis for competency judgment. Ano nga rito yung competency? It is a skill performed with standards. Ano yung gagawin mo doon kapag nagagawa ka ng competency? No? Not basis po siya, sir. Hindi po siya basihan na i-judge ang competency na yan. Corroboration of evidences. Gathering of evidences. Kaya ba? Yes. Sir, dimensions of competency. Possible ba? Yes. No? Possible ba yan siya, sir? Yes, very possible yan. Very ano yan, no? Very um, uh, dynamic po yan, no? Sir, physical setting of assessment center. Bakit? Kapag sa physical center ba, nadjudge ka ba dyan kung marunong ka na? O hindi? Di ba? Di ba? Do I make sense? Kapag physical arrangement of assessment center. Uy, ang ganda na ng kanilang facility. O? Oh? O oh, since maganda ang kanilang mga facility, magaling na magaling um magaling na pala yung mga bata do. Oops, hindi po 'yun basis ng competency judgment, no? It's not about the physical arrangement, no? It talks about the gathering of evidences. It talks about the dimensions of competencies and it also talks about the requirement of a unit of competency. All right? So that is the Physical Arrangement of Assessment Center. Hindi po siya kasali sa uh, basis of competency judgment natin. Gaya na nga lang yan sa ating mga elementary, di ba? O during our high school, na? Uh, para makapasa kayo sa subject namin, uh, magpasa kayo ng mga floor wax at mga ano, mga floor wax at bunot. O, di ba? Magpasa kayo ng floor wax at bunot. Pasado na kayo, pak, ganon. What is the connection of floor wax and bunot sa pagpasa niya sa iyong klase? No? Natututo ba siya sa mga lessons mo kapag nagpapasa siya ng floor wax at saka sa, ano, sa bunot? Hindi. Di ba? That is the same true with this one. Not a basis of competency judgment is the physical setting arrangement. Hindi porke maganda na yung physical arrangement dyan, magaling na yung mga bata. Magaling na yung mga trainees natin. Okay? So, maram, okay? So, yan po yung basihan ko natin dito. Teachers, I hope I am just clear about this. Thank you so much pa rin sa ating mga top messages at saka sa ating mga 57 viewers. Ayan, no? Di talaga sila umalis, coach. No? Maraming salamat po sa inyong pat, sa inyong patuloy na pagsubaybay. Sir, which is not a purpose of competency-based assessment? Ano yung hindi dapat or ano yung hindi purpose ng competency-based assessment? Sa CBA, di ba? Pagkakaroon dito ng competency, di ba? A skill. No? Ano yung dito ang hindi purpose ng competency-based assessment? Sir, we have to certify competence. In what way? Through assessment. It's correct. That is correct. No? Letter B, sir. Determine training gap. No? So that means na determine training gap kasi. Ano nangyayari dito is that? No? Ano nangyayari dito was that? Determine training gap is sa pag-start mo pa lang ng iyong training. During the assessment, may pagkakaiba ba? Therefore, it is one of the purpose bakit nagkakaroon ng assessment. Tama? Now, dito sir, recognition of prior learning. This is a very purpose of competency-based assessment. Bakit? This measures how far you've come to know about the specific skills. How far you've come to do about the specific skills. Yun po yung tatawag natin, recognition of prior learning. But testing the equipment is not a purpose. 
of competency-based assessment. Okay? CBA is not a purpose of, uh, sorry, CBAs, no? One of the purpose here is A, B, and E, but not letter D. Ito, bumarga ito, di ba? Ah. Ah, ito. No, which is the qualification of a competency assessor. Bumalik na to. Dapat si letter A ang sagot dito. Should not have a six months industry experience. Ito, what is the role or which is a role of an assessor during the assessment? Ito, during eh. No? Actually, bumalik ito kanina. The answer here is letter D. Letter D is the answer here. All right. So, mm -hmm. ayan. Next question tayo. Dito tayo. Dami ng ano ah. Dami ng mga tanong na umuulit eh. Let me check later ha. How do teacher? Uh, teacher, sorry, sorry ah. I was cut off kasi napakaingay ng ano eh. Napakaingay sa labas. Anyway. So, ayan ah. Sorry for that. No? Ito. Who is not involved in the evaluation process? <laughs> Ito, bumagin ito, di ba? Processing officer po yan. Okay, processing po yan. Next. Which should not be done when giving the feedback? Letter B. Hold on, parang may, may na-duplicate kasi sa ano eh. Parang there was a duplication sa ano, no? Duplication sa ano ko. So, i-check ko muna to teachers ah. Bakit di ko to na-review? Ayan, no? Ano nangyari? Hold on teachers ah. Uh, actually, ma parang may ano dito eh. Parang nagkakaroon ng ano eh. Nagkakaroon ng duplication of data, no? Aha. Uh -huh. Hindi ko to na-check agad eh. Dito tayo. This one, teachers. Okay. All right. Among the assessor's legal and ethical responsibilities. Hold on. All right, so hold on, ha. Ayan. Ay, nako, daming interruptions. Sorry for that one, teachers. Ayan, okay. Let's proceed. Sige. Next question tayo. This one. Among the assessor's legal and ethical responsibilities. Assessor's legal and ethical responsibilities. Which entails ensuring that there is assessment should not hold back or delay workplace system. Na? So, which entails ensuring that the assessment should not hold back or delay workplace systems? Ayan. Is it the integrity of the assessor? Or promote, uh, protect confidentiality of assessment or, or outcomes? 
or yung insure uh, insuring no transparency reporting and recording of assessment process or adhering to the quality systems policies and procedures in the workplace again ha ito yung condition no should not hold back or delay in the workplace system pumasok tayo sa higher order thinking skills na question all right now what you're going to do here is to analyze first ano yung pinaka topic sentence mo diyan Okay, that talks about the legal and ethical responsibilities. In which case, ano yung condition niya? Should not hold back or delay workplace system. Does it talk about integrity of the assessor kapag workplace system mag-usapan? No? Yung, kalaha, yung kalahatan on how the system works. No? How the workplace system is being organized. No? Does it talk about integrity of the assessor? No. No. Now, this one, letter B, sir. Protect confidentiality of assessment outcome. Pwede to. Pero under ethical responsibilities, hindi ka po tinatanong ng confidentiality of data. Okay? You are not asked about confidentiality of data. What you are being tried to ask is hindi ma-delay yung proseso. No? Yung proseso. Therefore, it's not about confidentiality here. Kasi lahat naman talaga sila ay ethical responsibilities. Okay? Sir, ensuring transparent reporting. We are not talking about transparency. Okay? We are talking about transparency. The best answer and suitable answer here is letter D. The quality system. Kapag quality system, no policies and procedures of the workplace. No? You should adhere to that. Bakit? Because it will not hold back or delay workplace system. The answer here is letter D. Huh? Ah. So adhering quality system, sir. Kung baga, kung ano yung oras, no? kung ano yung oras na sinusunod, yun talaga yung sundin. Isa pa, kung ano yung mga procedures na gagamitin mo, yun talaga yung sundin. Because it is how the workplace system works. Kapag hindi mo yun susundin, the tendency is there is a delay of function. Tama? That's why the answer here is letter D. It is adhering to the quality system and policies to the workplace. According to the cognitive theory of multimedia learning, ayan, sir, anong, prince, anong competency ba to, sir, sa ating, ano, anong competency ba to sa ating TM, sir? This is on the utilization of media. Okay? Or ICT, no? People more deeply from words and pictures than blank alone. Oh. Alin dyan? Or anong tawag dyan? Or what is the answer there? No? Sinong familiar ng cognitive theory of multimedia learning? Sabi daw dito, no? people learn more deeply from words and pictures than from blank alone. Oh. Actually, uh, this theory naman teachers are developed from Mayer. No? So, this suggests na paggamit ng uh, words and pictures, no? okay? ang paggamit ng uh, words and pictures, the textual information, and then the visual information creates far more learning. Diba? Sabi nga nila, yung audio-visual. No? Audio-visual, tapos, aside mo na ito, is the pictures pa rin. Okay? So, ito yung tatawating dual channel eh. No? The dual channel effect of this learning. What's the answer here? From observations alone? Ha? Huh? Is it from observations alone? What was that? Ha? Huh? Letter C. The from theory alone. Ayan, no? Huh? So, the answer here is letter B from pictures alone. Okay? Kasi multimedia, di ba kapag multimedia, masanya natin is picture, di ba? Uh, pictures. Pero, people learn more deeply from words and pictures. Kaya nga sa mga books natin, may pictures na may words pa. Di ba? Ini-explain doon sa mga pictures ng books natin kung ano yung andon mismo sa picture na yun. Okay? Kasi may hirapan ka pong mag-interpret kapag picture alone. That is letter B, from picture alone. 
He is a proponent of cone of learning. Uy, cone of learning, no? Ito yung tinatawag nating cone of experience, no? Or the learning pyramid. Kanino nga ulit yun? Ah, sir, sa ang topic ba to sa trainer's methodology? This is on the trainer's methodology level 2. Okay? This is a topic on trainer's methodology level 2 that talks specifically on what do we call as generating or synthesizing curriculum. Okay? So, sino yung may-ari nun? Or sino yung proponent nun? That was Edward, or oh, sorry, Edward, Edgar Dale. Oi, proponent of cone of learning. Cone of experience. Sino yun? That was Dale, no? In his cone of, the more you are direct to the base, okay, ito yun, no? The more you're closer to the base, the more ka nagkakaroon ng active participation or the most concrete na kung saan, no, directo dito eh. No? Ah, the more you're closer to the base, the more ka nagkakaroon ng hands-on learning. The more ka nagkakaroon ng interaction. Halimbawa ito, sir, is real-life engagement gaya ng hands-on activities, experiment, field trip, simulation, yun po yung mga direct experiences. Sa gitna naman doon, is kanina yun doon, that is the indirect experiences. Ah, balikan nyo to ha sa Prof. Ed ninyo. Ha? I know, magaling dito si Coach, ano, si Coach, ja, si Coach Melvin. Ano? Ah, kapag sa indirect experiences, nasa gitna po ito ng ating cone of learning experience according to Edgar Dale. No? Na kung saan this uh, this includes audio visual, no? Uh, okay? Um this includes ano no? This includes this what do we call as um ano no? Photographs, the videos, tapos yung verbal naman, yung pinakatuktok natin dito ano? Oh, uh, yung pinakatuktok natin is those the Okay, that's only for the oral natin. The closer you are to the base, is the more you are connected directly to the real life experiences. Yun po yung tabi ni Edgar Dale sa kanyang sa kanyang proponent na cone of experience or cone of ayan. Next, this is a device which allows you to adjust, enhance and create effects on sounds. Oh, alin dito yung may sounds? Electronic whiteboard that is for merely interaction of writing, no? Touch sensitive surfaces, those are mga electronic whiteboard natin. LCD monitor, the liquefied uh, liquid crystal display monitor, no? Oh, the yung mga natin yung, yung mga for output purposes, no? Output purposes, sila po yung bigyan ng mga outputs natin, gaya ng viewing of videos, image, mga ganun, mga bagay na yun. Microphone, sila yung mga device is na kung saan nagre-receive no ng sound and convert it into electrical signals no yun po yung mga microphones po natin and the answer here is no other than sound mixers ah mga sound mixers po natin no sila po yung mga nagmi-mix of course no enhancing the sound no mga amplifiers natin no oh mga sound mixers so adjust the level enhance no Diba sa ano natin sa electronics to amplify means to increase. Diba yan. Not a benefit ito, not a benefit of ICT for teachers, no? Not a benefit of using ICT for teachers. What is the best answer here? Ha? Huh? What is the best answer here? It is not a benefit of ICT for teachers. Is it letter A? Computer use during lessons motivates students to continue using learning outside school hours. Hmm. Huh? Ito pa, sir. Enhancement of professional growth and experience. Or greater flexibility in when and where tasks are carried out. Or ICTs usually consume electricity. This is a no-brainer question. Kaya nga lang, nagkakaroon ka dito ng confusion in between A and D. No? Pasok na mismo si letter B. Okay? Letter B is already is, is already a good answer, good spot. 
letter C is also a good spot. Okay? Pero, sometimes, you'll be confused with letter A and letter D. Tingnan si letter A. Computer use during lessons motivates students to continue using learning outside school hours. Ah. Na? Ayan. Medyo parang nega parang positive siya sa teachers in terms of student negative siya. Tama? Na? Ah. Si letter D naman, ICT is usually consume electricity. Is it a benefit for ICT? Ha? Is it a benefit for ICT? Di ba? Pag isip nyo nga daw, a benefit. Kapag si letter D ang isa sa natin, ICT usually consumes electricity. Kapag benefit of UC for N mas mabigat. Is it letter A or letter D? Remember, we are not talking about students. We are talking about teachers. Diba? Ah, the best answer here is no other than letter D. ICT is usually consumed electricity. Uh, do not be confused with letter A. Ha? Sometimes I say, we try to argue with this one, Manggod. No? We try to argue, uh, argue with this one during our assess, uh, during our um, training methodology processes. No? Nag-asalay kami sa aming, ano, sa aming uh, uh, lead, lead trainer namin, Coach. Uh, sir, bakit hindi po sa letter A? We focus on teachers actually here on this side. Okay? Ayan. And uh, eto pa, sir, which is not an assumption. Not an assumption of the cognitive theory of multimedia learning. No? Not, ha? Alin dyan ang may negative? Alin dyan ang may negative? Is it letter A? That learning is an active process of filtering, selecting, organizing, and integrating problems. That's correct. Letter B, there are two separate channels, auditory and visual, for processing information. That is also correct. Sir, limited channel capacity can be increased through the use of multimedia. That is correct. But take a look with the word can be decreased. This is a limitation and this is not an assumption of cognitive learning theory. Therefore, the best answer here is no other than letter D. All right. The answer here is letter D. Next. Ah. Which of the statements are false about effectiveness of ICT in education? Which the following statement, which the statement are false about the effectiveness of ICT in education? Is it letter A? ICT, okay ha, ito ha, false. Hindi totoo. No? Oh. Alin kaya dyan ang hindi totoo? Letter D, sir. ICTs help prepare individuals for the workplace. Tama naman talaga. No? Letter A. ICTs also facilitate access to resource person. Tama. This is more on contact. No? This is more on connections, business connections. Letter C. The ability to transcend time and space is one of the defining features of ICT, patay. Letter B, inform, information conveyed with ICTs are thoroughly checked so they never wrong. Alin sa dalawa ang mas mabigat? The ability of transcending time and space is one of the defining... Sorry. It should be the ability to send message in transcending time and space is one of the defining features of ICT. That's correct, huh? It should be ability to, okay, to, to send message in transcending time. Therefore, only letter B is the is not the correct answer here. Bakit? Because of the statement, so they are never wrong. Ayan. Huh? Dear teachers, no, I hold on. Let's finish this one, teachers. Huh? Uh, so I think it's just only up to, I think, mayon na to. 
my uh, last slide na ito. ito. Yes, that's correct. What is a planning tool that classifies? Bumabalik na ito, no? Bumabalik na ito, no? That classifies the evidence requirement that is evidence plan. Okay, the answer here is evidence plan. All right? Now, Dito, sir, piloting can be done before the validation of the curriculum. Piloting can be done before the curriculum validation. No? What is curriculum validation again? No? To check, to evaluate if the curriculum is effective to the student. That is curriculum validation. And this is under trainer methodology level 2. No? So piloting kasi, that means na you are trying to run through. No? Pinapauna mo yun doon, pilot nga, di ba? Oh. Now, the answer here is true. Okay? It should be true. It can be done before the curriculum validation. Alam nga naman, mag-validate ka ng curriculum before mo siya ipatest. No? Before mo siya, uh, alam nga naman, mag-evaluate ka ng curriculum na hindi pa nagagamit. Tama? It should be tested, it should be applied first before validating if it is effective. The answer here is true. Okay? Ayan. All right, so I'm going to have to stop sharing with this one. Dear teachers, that ends our discussion this afternoon po. Okay, so teachers, masaya po si, si Coach Chan na nakasama po kayo in our session for this afternoon. No? And um, ipagpatuloy po natin ang ating uh, paniniwala, no? ang ating dasal, ang ating pag-aaral that we may be able to ace and top and pass the board exam this September 2023. No? So I am very much grateful that you have attended. No? That we ended up 50 viewers. Kahit 50 viewers lang to. No? So um, still, no? nakikita ko na ang inyong mga determinations for you to pass the board exam. No? Teachers, I am very much proud of you no na ipinaglaban niyo yung TLE po natin okay i coach John no are very happy no na kahit sa kabila pa naman ng pagsubok na ina na, na ibinigay ng PRC sa atin okay so nakayanan niyo pa rin yung sagutan ipaglaban ng ang TLE po okay so thank you po sa lahat ng na mga nag-join sa akin this afternoon and this will be uploaded po in my YouTube channel all right this will be uploaded po in my YouTube channel and um if ever may tanong kayo na, Sir, saan mo ba yung ibang research na part? Yung iba po na mga TM na part, andun po mismo sa mga exclusive Facebook page po namin ngayon. No? So if you wish to become a member of Sir Chance Tele Tambayan, no? uh, message, the, message the page directly, no? Sir Chance Tele Tambayan Facebook page. Andun po si Coach Chan mismo ang nag-manage doon. At kung gusto nyo pa talaga, ng parang pangmalawakang ano no pangmalawakang mga ideya pa talaga you enroll also to Sir Brian's Tutorial Center no review tutorial SBRTC andun po si Coach Jan nakatira no hindi po kami magkaaway ni Coach Jan nag-uusap po kami no hindi po kami magkaribal <laughs> no we're friends with Coach Jan and ulitin ko po I am very happy na nanood kayo ngayon sa aking channel Thank you so much, dear teachers, and mag-ingat palagi, mag-aral, magdasal, at ipagpatuloy ang paniniwala na this September 2023 licensure examinations for teachers, this will be your last board exam, and you can ace the exam and raise the flag for TLE. TLE, let us all raise our flag. Have a good day, and happy Father's Day sa mga lahat ng papa dyan na nanonood ngayon. God bless.